Okay. Um, so before I start, there's some people that are having issues. So let me just, uh, so what you want to do is to access the portal, just go to the training. That I'm a tech training.com. This is the portal for this, uh, this course. And you will see here, the free IT course is what we're offering. So you just click on that and it will bring you to this page. Now, the link for the session, if you wanna join it in your computer, you see this link here, just click on this and this will allow you to join the Zoom session online. Okay, so just do that. Um, So yeah, so this is um this is the one uh, you just click on and this will get you started uh, to join the, the online class. So today we're going to be working on several modules. So this is what you guys were supposed to do. Uh, this year is the link that should have showed you how to install uh, Zoom on your computer. And also some people have... Uh, want to learn to type. Some people can't type. And I'll encourage every one of you to take time and learn to type. Usually, if you spend about 20 minutes a day and you do it for a couple of months, you can become a pretty accurate typer. So uh, there are a couple of uh, links here you can use. These are free links to teach you how to type. Now, uh, this course is not a typing class. Typing is something that you have to uh, just practice on your own but it will save you so much time and a headache. Uh, I remember when I took typing in high school, I hated that class, it was boring, but it was one of the best class I had because uh, it saves a lot of time when I'm writing papers, when I'm doing my work, because I learned to type. So I'll encourage every one of you to take advantage of this. It's a free, some of the software out there are paid for, but, but this is free. So uh, there are two that I put here, this one, if you just click on it, this will open. And you see how it goes by lessons? So you just, these are your beginning lessons. So you just go one at a time and go through it. And then at the end, you have the more advanced and expert. So you can go from beginner to a really excellent typer. And all you do is you, you go there and then you just hit start exercise and just follow. Put your hands in the key that they, they tell you and then just type away. Like, so you type in this and it's showing you what to type. So A, S, S. So you just follow that. I'm not gonna go through this, but again, this is what this does. So this is one of the software. The other one is this uh, second one here, this Ed Club. And this is online as well. So you just go to the site and they will play a video and just show you so you go to the first lesson and it, it follows the same thing. So you just go through each lesson and uh, you just click on the first one. They will kind of explain. So I hear you want to type like a pro. Let's start by setting up your finger positioning. Look at the F and J keys on your keyboard. Do you see the bumps on each key? Close your eyes and feel for the bumps using your two index fingers. Take your time, but don't look. Did you get it? So I'm gonna stop that as well, but you get the point. So you can go here and just follow those programs and you can become a pretty good typer. So uh, please, please take advantage of it. Um, and uh, 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 this, this will help you a lot. So one of the first thing I always tell people is you take time to type it makes you more comfortable with a computer and you can go from there. So these are all the, the, the stuff that are here. And then finally here, this is for you how you can get uh, Google Docs. So Google Docs is a pretty cool tool. If you have, micro, uh, if you have a Google account, um, some people computers don't have Microsoft Word, they don't have Excel, they don't have some of these uh, applications. But with Google Docs, you can create your own work, you can without uh, any uh, without any issues. So just kind of go through that. And uh, so people are asking a question. Okay, so some people are saying they can't hear. So sometimes, uh, yeah, these things happen, but if the majority of people can't hear me, then there's something. 
but um, I see you guys can hear me. So like I was saying, just go, uh, you can go to Google Docs. So you go to this page and these are the things you can, you can do. You have the Google Docs, spreadsheets and, and, and everything in the forms. So these are some free software you can use. Please mute yourself if you're not speaking. There's some echo coming in. Again, um, so this is a pretty cool uh, tool you can use to better manage, um, uh, leverage actually to better leverage uh, Google. So those are some helpful tools, right? And here there's a video I kind of showed you what Google Doc does. If you click on this link here, and uh, it will take you to a YouTube video that kind of just explains uh, how you can, oh you, can, you can use Google Docs, okay? So you can watch that video if you wanna know how to, the different things Google Docs can, can provide. So uh, you can watch that video at your own uh, leisure. Um, that being said, let's, uh, get started. So this is module one. It's just the stuff that you need in this helpful video. And today we're going to start with two and three. So module, uh, the first one we're going to talk about is this module, the goal setting and, 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 and this is what we're going to do. So on the link, you're going to see here a little goal setting document. If you click on that, you can actually download some of this, uh, this documentation. This is what you're gonna use to set your goals, okay? And I will explain more about it, but again, uh, it will be a little exercise for you to do, uh, but it will be here. So without further ado, let me jump to the main, uh, one of the main topic. We have two topics today, this goal setting topics, and then we're gonna start with the actual technical work. So um, let's get started. So again, welcome to uh, IMO Tech Training. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is uh, Mohamed Fofana, and I am the founder and CEO of uh, IMO Tech Solutions. We're actually a, a IT consulting firm. Uh, we have uh, cybersecurity experts, we have cloud experts, we have database experts. So we do consult with um, both uh, federal government we also consult with private companies and we are we also consult internationally internationally we've done consultation for in ghana uh in liberia in sierra leone so uh we are not only uh, uh have a presence in the u.s but we also have a presence uh in in in, in, in overseas um we we strive ourselves we are very passionate about it and uh, one of the things we, uh, we noticed was a lot of uh, uh, Africans, Africans American, people of color see themselves like sometimes they just don't believe like IT, they think it's very, very complicated. They, they're scared of technology. And uh, one of the things we, we try to do is to actually encourage uh, 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 people to come in and learn about IT. Uh, myself, I actually uh, studied economics in college and um, after college, I started working as an analyst. But then I started noticing that um, um, some of the people I was training at the company were getting promoted. Some of some good things were happening to other people. I just felt stuck, like I wasn't going anywhere. And a friend of mine told me like, hey, why don't you look at IT? And my excuse was like, I don't know anything about IT, you know? But I needed a change. You know, I just felt like something needed a change. So I went back to school and I got my MBA. I came back. To work, I mean, I was working. I was I was still working for the same company as I was getting my MBA, but I didn't get much. Uh, what happened was the maybe I got a three percent raise, but now I have another eighty thousand dollars student loan for my master's program that I was doing. So not only did I have more debt, but my financial financial wise things were not going well. So I kind of stumbled into this course called there was an Oracle database class. And I remember, I think at the time I was making like um, 55,000 or something like that a year, which wasn't bad, but still with my responsibility, it wasn't enough for me to, to take care of all the things that I needed to take care of. 
So I took the Oracle class and then I started uh, learning um, Oracle. It was six months but I took that class. And it was difficult because it was very, very technical. Now, at the end of that six months, uh, uh, um, I felt like a lot of stuff I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. But I just kept, I stuck with it, I stuck with it. And I remember going through the interview process, I felt like I wasn't ready, I'm never gonna get a job, but something just kept telling me, hey, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And at the end of the, uh, the six months, I started the interview process, which was rough, because they usually call you first on the phone and ask you technical questions to see if you're good enough for them to actually call you to come to the office for the uh, actual interview. So there were a few times, like, they would ask me a question and I will freeze. I remember one time I literally hung up because they asked me a question that I didn't know. And then I called them again. I was like, uh, sorry, we got disconnected. But I went through some, you know, rough interviews, the first few, but then I ended up getting a job. And my first job, I will tell you, uh, mind you, I was making like $55,000. My first job as a DBA with six months, after six months of just training, I was, make, I was offered $124,000. Now that's a big job. So from that point on, uh, I've never looked back. I've, you know, it, it basically changed my life. And I'm gonna text the, the training part started because I'd recommended some guys to go take classes with this other guy. And he, uh, he took for, uh, he was pretty rough. Uh, and at the end of the class, he said he's not teaching anymore. So I felt bad for these guys. So we started meeting Tuesdays and Thursdays at night just to, uh, just to tutor them. And after uh, three or four months of me tutoring them, uh, they, they finished and, um, uh, can you guys hear me? Somebody's saying they can't hear me. Okay. Yes, it's okay. Okay. So after, after a few months of, uh, of training them, they convinced me to, to teach. So they were like, you know, you're pretty good at this stuff. You should try to, 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 uh, to teach. And, and that's how the training part of Imotech starts. So the whole point of that story, just to tell you guys that uh, I really, I am passionate and I care about uh, people learning. And I, I am one person whose uh, life technology has changed and, and, and that's a passion. So it's not, we don't, it's not about the money here per se. It's more about um, making sure um, people get the skill set that uh, they can learn. And we're trying to build a community of, of professionals who not only are going to be professionals, but can also help other people who are trying to enter in the field. So, um, so again, uh, I've been in the industry as a database admin for about seven, going eight years now. Uh, I am currently consulting for the Department of Veteran Affairs. I manage the databases and uh, some other applications. Um, so that's a little bit about me and um, and I'm a tech. So that being said, hold on one second. Let me just. Okay, please So um, that being said, um, there's some things I wanted to go over. Uh, we're going to do so to, uh, we want some, uh, to do and do's and don'ts. So, um, rule number one, please, please join on time. I know, um, other people have joined on time so we can start on time and finish on time. Let's try to be, uh, uh, um, respectful of the time and, and make sure, try to be about five minutes early before the class starts. That way, if you face any issues, you can resolve it before we, uh, we start. Uh, another thing, it's about being courteous and respectful to each other. So please uh, consider that the golden rule, treat other people like you want to be treated. So let's be respectful of each other. Um, let's not argue uh, or interrupt. Uh, even if you disagree with some, a point that I make, um, I don't mind, I, we can have a conversation about it later. But to keep the class going, since there's so many people, about uh, 96 people so far online, uh, let's just keep that at a minimum. And also, uh, sometimes if I'm explaining something, wait for the topics uh, to be explained. And then you, if, you have, if I have a question, we'll go from that. So don't, sometimes if I'm explaining something, you may not, you may feel like you have a question, but let me finish the point before you get to that particular question. 
Okay. So um, uh, also, um, I sometimes will call on people. So uh, to answer questions, I'll ask questions. Everyone is is welcome to uh, to speak. But sometimes I'll call on specific people. Uh, so please uh, be mindful of that. Don't just yell the answers if I don't call call on you sometimes. Okay, and also don't hug the mic. I know in the past I've had people where everybody wants to speak, uh, and the same people want to keep speaking and speaking, and and sometimes it, 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 it eliminates um, eliminates um, um, those kind of issues. Um, so now that we've gotten all that out the way, let's uh, let's get. Okay, uh, so uh, so um, okay, so um, so some of the reason why uh, I'm take is a good place to learn is uh, we have people uh, who are certified. Um, our staff are all working in the field and they have uh, experience working. And not only are they experienced, they have the, all the certification. Uh, we make we try to make IT learning easy and flexible for people. We don't make it complex. Again, just like now, uh, we have people who can be uh, join online and also people who can come in. So we, we can do a hybrid. Um, so if you're not if you're not in the, in Maryland where we're located, you can be anywhere in the world. Right now, we have people from Africa, different parts of the. Uh, of, of the world joining this free session. So the, the platform, the online platform allows us to, to do that. And also we do believe in leadership and self personal development. Um, so we always start our classes with that, you know, teach people not only to be IT technical, but also how to set goals, how to go after and get what they really want. So we learn, we're, we're constantly learning and whatever we learn, we do share with, with other people. And uh, we have a nice training platform. Uh, you guys can see this is one of them where we try to put everything online. You have access to everything. You can go and, and just learn from that. So today we are going to start the first part of this class is not technical. And even if you're, you don't get anything from this session, if you can use this, uh, what you're going to learn from this slide, and you apply it to your life. We're in June, we have six months before the year ends. By New Year's Day, I guarantee you, a lot of things will change for you. It's a very simple concept, but you know, you just have to apply it. You know, someone, people usually say learning, um, knowledge is power. My definition is a little bit different. The application of knowledge is power. You can learn something, but if you don't use it, it's not going to help you. So application of knowledge is power. You learn something, try it. There are many books and many resources that people are available, but people don't try it. Now, when you try something for the first time, it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel awkward, but you keep at it. After a while, it becomes very, it becomes second nature, right? So again, don't just listen and move through, but if you literally take this, and I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. If you take this advice and you apply it in six months, you're going to see things in your life are changing. Okay. So the thing I'm going to talk about is one of, I've been using this for most of my life, but I didn't know till I actually read the book and I went through some of the, 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 the recommendation it was given and it changed a lot. So um, even the fact that I, 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 I have an IT company is a good example of how uh, this book and what I'm gonna share with you guys has helped me, okay? So there's something called the six lies. And uh, again, when I'm saying this, think about it, just don't listen passively. Listen and think about it in your own life. Does it make sense? And uh, try to make it personal. And then 
see how it relates to how you've taken things in the past and see if that makes sense to you. Uh, me, when I'm learning something, I just don't sit there and, 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 and take what the person is saying. I'm thinking too, does this make sense? Uh, you know, that's how you learn. Just don't take words from people, but also try to make it personable and see how it helps you. So one thing I'm going to talk about is the six lives that we, we live in right now. So the first thing is you have a lot of people who, who says everything matters. And people that are very organized, they have a, 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 a to-do list. They wake up in the morning and say, okay, here are the 10 things I need to get done today. And then they will work on those 10, they will start working on those 10 things. Right? These are people that are very organized. And by the way, don't worry, all the slides I'm going, I'm going through, they will be available. So you have access to them on the, the portal. Uh, you can go back to them and watch them at your own time. So everything, so just pay attention, listen, and then later you can go back and review and, and you'll be fine. So I'll make everything available. And also, like I said earlier, the class is being recorded and I'll post it in case you wanna uh, go back and review. This is one of the things, you know, we, we try to make sure. So you're not rushing to take pictures or anything like that. You can just absorb the information. Now, people who organize, yeah, go ahead. Question from online. Um, my question is, if we are having classes, can I ask for permission to record too? Uh, sure. Yeah. But again, you, you're welcome to, but don't, I will, I will post, I will, this will be available. Yeah. But again, if you want to do it on your end, I'm okay with it. You know, it's a free course anyway. Okay. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So that being said, you have uh, what's called, people who are very organized. I used to do this and I still do that. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, what are the key things that I need to do? And I'll do a to-do list. But a to-do list is not always oh, effective, right? Because what you should actually be trying to do is what's called a success list. There's some things I could do, but if I don't do them, it's okay. But the things I should do are the ones I should focus working on. I'm going to tell you guys a, a, a small story. There's a teacher. The teacher comes in with a bucket in front of the students, right? And he takes uh, these big rocks and he puts the rocks inside the bucket till the bucket is full. Then he asks the students, hey, is the bucket full? And the students are like, yeah, yeah, the bucket is full. He said, no, the bucket is not full. So what he does, he takes these little marbles, these little pebbles, he puts the pebbles and then he starts shaking it and the pebbles start going in between the, 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 the parts where the, the rock then and then he shakes it in, the pebbles go in there, and then he asks the students again, is this, is this bucket full? And the students say, yeah, 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 it's full. He said, no, it's not full. Then he takes sand. He pours sand and he shakes the sand, right? Now the sand goes in between the pebbles and everything. Then he asks him again one more time, is it full? And the students are like, yeah, yeah, now it's definitely full. He said, no, it's still not full. Then he takes water and pours water in and said, now this bucket is full. Now think about it, if he had put those things in the reverse order and if they had put the rock before or the pebble before or the sand all of those things would not have gone in there wow. but because he put them in specific order they got they went in there so that should be like your life there's some things in your life that are like the rocks these are like the key things that are critical to you what are these things your health right if you're not healthy i don't care what comes to your life you're not going to be happy so take care of your health Make sure you're eating properly. Uh, make sure you're exercising, these kind of things, right? Your spirituality, whomever you believe, God, Allah, uh, 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 Hindu, whatever religion you do, but spirituality is something that, 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 that you should be looking at. Those are the rocks of your life, right? Your education. You guys are here trying to learn something because what goes between your ears are very, very important. So these are things that are important, right? Your relationship. What do I mean by relationship? Your family, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your kids, your family. These are critical. These are the rocks in your life, right? And, uh, 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 um, and your finances. Can I pay my bills? Do I have money to invest? Do I have money to... These are the core things. So these are the rocks of your life. So you should be mending these things, taking care of it, making sure you spend time doing these, right? Then you have the little pebbles of your life. The pebbles are like uh, making sure maybe you take your car for oil change. <laughs> uh, you know, the little things that, you know, you, you deal with. 
But what happens is a lot of people spend time dealing with the sand and water. Facebook all day, texting, spending two, three hours. And, and I'm not saying don't do these things, but have a priority, right? You can go to Facebook, you can go to social media, you can do some of these things. But we spend so much time worrying about the little things that don't matter. And we forget the things that are important. And that's how one year goes by, five years goes by, and you haven't done anything, you haven't accomplished anything. So, um, uh, so that's one of the, 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 the problems that, the, that people face. So, um, so um, again, um, we're just, just, just remember that those analogy in life and then just keep making sure that you pay attention to those things that are important, okay? So this is the first lie. So not everything is matter. Not everything is the same. Some things are, 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 are not as, uh, some things are not as uh, important as other things. So you have to be mindful of that. That's what the difference between what I could be doing and what I should be doing. So the successful people work, they focus on the things they should be doing, even if they don't like it. Do I like studying? Not really, but should I be studying instead of watching TV? Yes. Could I be doing something else? Yes, but what should I be doing? So that's the key difference here. Okay, the next lie is um, multitasking. People are always saying, you know, I can do two things at one time. I can watch TV and, uh, and study at the same time. I learned at the hallway in college that it doesn't work well. So what you see in here is a chart that kind of No, okay. And then, and then I will ask, because people say they can deny no more, say once you get Beach's book or you get European book. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. May I lie? Yeah. Maybe you know what I No, no, I'm in Paddy with the with the flans. I'm not liking Paddy also. Uh -huh. yeah, you can see those of my brother in a in a plus. Now all begin. We are not hearing you anymore. Uh, more you are mute. Oops. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, we All can. Right. Thank you. Okay, so here, um, you, uh, these are people who say they can multitask. And basically, uh, this is an example here of somebody who is trying to multitask. So here's what happens when you're multitasking. Our brain are made to uh, only do one thing at a time. So let's say you're doing your work. And all of a sudden, some distraction comes in, right? Now you're switching from your work to that distraction. Your mind now has to get reoriented to go and do the other stuff. And then once you're done doing that distraction, your mind has to switch again and then come back and reorient itself for the task you were doing. So whenever you multitask, your brain goes back and forth. So multitasking doesn't work as well. So what you should do is, if you have something to do, just focus on that one thing and get it done. You can see here from start to finish, when you're multitasking, look how long it takes instead of you just focusing on that one thing and getting it done. So do not try to multitask. If you say you're doing a task, focus on that and get it done. So again, effective people are more 
they, they have the ability to just focus on what they're doing and they just focus on that. Okay, so multitasking doesn't work. Now, another thing is some people said I'm disciplined. So because I'm disciplined, I can get things done. But what research has shown is discipline is good, but it can only last for so long. So, you know, like first of um, 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 January 1st, everybody makes like the, the big wish saying they're gonna be, they're gonna be losing weight, whatever the, the goals are. But wait by the 15th of January, you start seeing like less people going in there. That first couple of weeks, they are, they're using the discipline saying, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to do certain things. But as time goes by, that passion, that discipline starts to go and they go back to their whole habits. So discipline, this is, you see here, this is in the amount of discipline it takes on the vertical side. And then this is time in an horizontal time. So start with discipline, but as time goes on, your discipline starts to drop, right? So discipline alone isn't good enough for you to accomplish your goals. And all, some other people say they have willpower. Man, I have a strong will. I'm very determined. I have a strong willpower, right? Willpower also has a limit. So this chart here shows you um, an example of, of uh, these police, people who have committed crime and they're up for parole. So when you're up for parole for, be, for you to be let out of jail early, you have to go in front of a board of judges and explain to them why you've changed, why you're not going to commit a crime again if you go out uh, to society. And you see here, this is three, this is uh, what happens. So in the morning, the judges are listening to these cases. And what happens is, by default, if the judges don't feel like anything, that you, you, you're not going to change, what they're going to do is they're going to deny you. So that's a default rule. Default rule is deny. But if you make a case and they believe, they will accept you. It will allow you your parole. So here you see in the morning, 60% of the parolees who go there and, 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 and make a case, they get the parole. But as the morning hours goes by, what happens? That number starts to drop. The reason why is these judges are hearing case after case after case. After a while, they sometimes would just, they bring it tired. And the default answer is no, right? So you see by the morning break, you see the percentage of people drop drastically, right? But then they take a break, they refresh their brain again, and then they come again, they start to listen to the second batch of people. And again, you see higher percentage. But you see the drop, it's even more than in the morning because again, the brain starts to get tired as the morning, the afternoon hour goes up. So then they take a break again. And in the evening, uh, in the late afternoon, you can see they, 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 they give some people and most of the people don't get parole. So what this is telling you is if you're in Israel and then you've committed a crime and you're up for parole, talk to your lawyer to make sure you schedule your hearing early in the morning because you got a better chance than later in the day. But this just tells you about human nature. Human nature tells you that uh, our brain gets tired and we don't listen. So willpower alone doesn't, doesn't help you accomplish your goals. And also, some people talk about a balanced life. Okay, somebody breathing on the mic. Please reduce, turn, mute yourself if you're not um, speaking. So, willpower, so balance life. So this is basically, we all, most of us have jobs. So you have to balance your work schedule and your personal life schedule, right? <laughs> and this is what we like to be, but we usually are, are not. We usually, uh, you, you like a perfect life balance, right? You work. So the, the black line here kind of shows you your work schedule. And then this one here kind of shows you your life. But most of the time what happens is your, your work kind of dictates sometimes how your life goes. If you want to take a break and you want to go on vacation, sometimes you're like your boss is like, hey, you can't take a month off or you can't do. So life is not a perfect balance. One always dominates. If you spend more time working, that means you have less time on your personal life. If you spend too much time with your personal side, you have less time working. So life is not a completely balanced. And what you want to do is figure out a way how you're not leaning too far, overworking and don't have a life, or vice versa. You're doing so much, you're not, you're not doing anything productive. So that life balance isn't always there. And the sixth one 
is big is bad. So a lot of people think that uh, they say big is bad, right? So they tell you, don't dream too big because if you dream too big, you're, you're gonna set yourself for disappointment. But he, what research has shown, whoops, sorry. What research has shown is there are, here is something, when you, when you have a small goal, it doesn't need that much work. It doesn't take that much effort. It's easy to accomplish. But, so this, is a, this box here shows a small goal that you set. So this is thinking, and this is the time it takes to reach that goal. So here, you see that, um, you see that when you, you don't think big and your goal is small, the outcome is, it may not take as much time, but the outcome is small. But if you think big, this is a thinking, let's say the red one here, you're thinking big, you have a lofty goal, and it's followed by massive action. Look at how much more you can get. So think about it. If you're making, let's say you're making $30,000 a year, please mute yourself. Somebody is, has a lot of noise. Um, please mute yourself. Um, Can you guys still hear me? See, that's what I don't want to do. I don't want to mute everyone because then you guys have questions. You know, you can't unmute yourself. But um, if people are making a lot of noise, I can't help but just do that. That's the that's the drawback. If I mute you guys and don't allow you to unmute yourself, then uh, uh, you can't ask questions. But then if I allow everyone to... Uh, or mute themselves, then it becomes a, a distraction. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna allow people to mute themselves again, but if that continues, then I have to just. Um... Okay, can you guys still hear me? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so that's what happens. So, uh, so think about it. If you have, uh, you're making thirty-one, thirty. $30,000 a year, and then you said uh, you want to make $33,000 a year. Does that really take a lot of effort? No. You can say, okay, you know what? I work a few extra hours. I will do a few more things here and there. It doesn't take that much effort to get that change, right? But now, if you say I'm making $30,000 a year and I want to double it in a year, I want to make $60,000 a year. Now, that's a big goal, and that requires massive action. Right? So what are some of the things you have to do? You may have to go train, go learn something new, go get, uh, you know, um, find a way, you know, it's going to force you to be a little more creative, you know, and you have to do some action to make those kind of goals. So my thing is saying, dream big, think big, but just don't dream big and don't do anything about it. When you dream big, followed by massive action, you follow through, you keep working hard, then your life gets that much better. Is it going to happen in short time? No, it takes time. It takes a little bit of time. Just like I told you guys, when I wanted to uh, switch jobs, I had to take six months of training to go learn a new skill because that's how I saw myself to get out of that situation. It didn't happen overnight. But by me taking massive action, I was able to actually have a better life because of it. So think about it. Dream big. There's nothing wrong with dreaming big and challenging yourself. But you have to follow it by action. And that's what this, this, this slide is, is talking about. So there's something called a domino effect. If you take a domino, a small one inch by one inch domino, you, behind it, you put another domino that's twice the size and it keeps going on. That little domino can start tipping up, you know, and keep. So the domino effect is also known as a snowball effect. When it starts, you start something, it may start really small. But as you keep going, it grows. Please meet yourself. So it will grow. It will grow. So here's a domino that's one inch. If that domino is one inch, it goes from, hold on one second. So if it goes from one inch, 
By the time you get any, each domino is, a, is, is, is twice the size as the previous one. By the time you get to the uh, 18th domino, it's long enough to topple the leaning um, tower of Pisa. So by the time you get to the 23rd domino, you, it's big enough to topple the Eiffel Tower. By the time you get to the 31st domino, it's higher than Mount Everest. But look, by, by the time you get to the 57th domino, it can actually touch the moon. So when you start something, you may start small, but if you keep taking everyday consistent action, you start building what's called a domino effect. And, 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 and you, can, you can make massive changes. Again, it doesn't happen over time, but consistent, thoughtful, um, intention, intentional practice of something makes you become really good at it, okay? So now that I've given you all of this, how do we, how do we accomplish our goals? There's something called a focusing question. And if you ask yourself this question, your mind, you, only you will know the answer to this question, but it's the questions we ask ourselves. The questions you ask yourself are very, very important. If you ask yourself, if you say, man, uh, why am I so stupid? Your brain is gonna tell you why exactly you're so stupid. Because that's, a, that's not a constructive question to ask yourself. If you go take an exam, you fail it, right? It's more like, hey, how, what, did I, what did I not do for me to fail this exam? It's not talking. Please meet yourself. Uh, it will say, you ask yourself your question. What, what? You ask yourself a question is, what can I uh, 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 do to make sure I pass the next exam, right? Your brain will tell you, maybe you should study more. Um, maybe go get a book to read. The questions you ask yourself, your brain will give you the answers. So if you ask yourself constructive, constructive questions, your brain will give you the answer. If you ask yourself destructive questions, your brain will tell you. This is what, um, so be careful. And it's hard, especially if you've been doing it your whole life, like the way you talk to yourself. If, you, if you've been doing it your whole life, talking to yourself in a negative way, it's hard to do. But the first step is to catch yourself doing that and then stop yourself from doing that. So if I go and I take a test, if I go and I take a test and I fail it, I'm not going to So if I, if I go and ask myself a question um, uh, saying, okay, I failed this test, how can I, how can I do better? This is the kind of stuff I, this is the kind of question I ask myself. If I go to an interview, I don't get it. I was like, okay, what, what can I learn from that interview? How, where can I improve? So I always try to ask myself questions that are going to empower me instead of not, instead of the other stuff. Be mindful of that. So the focusing question is this. You're going to ask yourself, what is one thing I can do such by doing it, everything else will be easier on, or unnecessary. This is a question you're going to ask yourself. So this is the homework you're going to have. Everyone is going to have an assignment for them to go home and do this for themselves. You're not going to turn it into me, but it's going to be your own. And don't worry, the slide is going to be there. I'm going to give you some things to help you work this out. So that's the question you're going to ask yourself. What is one thing I can do such by doing it, everything else is unnecessary. And this question can be asked in different parts of your life. So, you notice one thing. It didn't say, what's the five things I can do? It says, what's the one thing I can do? So, um, there's an echo here somewhere. Uh, so, it says, what's the one thing I can do? Right? So. Okay, I'm gonna mute everyone and just not align. So, you notice that the question doesn't say, the question doesn't say everyone. The question is one question, one. So, the reason why is, this one question, one thing, this is what focus does. If you ask yourself, what are five things I can do to improve my
financial status. Now you can pick five things you can work on. And those five things may be competing against themselves. Somebody may say, let me start an uh, ice cream business or let me start this. And it's only one you. You cannot do all of these things. So it's gonna, these things are going to compete for your resources. So this question asks you one thing. What's one thing I can do? If I do this one thing, can make everything else easier. And you can apply that to different parts of your life. So number one, how do I use it? For your spirituality, you can say, hey, what's one thing I can do to be closer to my God? One thing, and only you will know that answer. So for example, you'd be like, you know what, maybe I should pray. If I'm a Christian, I should go to church, maybe start going to church Sundays. If you're a Muslim, say, no, you know what, let me start with my five daily prayers. One thing, right? So in your spirituality, that's what you're worried about. For your physical, you say, hey, what's one thing I can do if I do this can help me physically to be better, right? Maybe your answer will be, maybe you start walking around the neighborhood once a week, I mean, three times a week. Uh, maybe start eating better. But it's going to give you one action you can take. So you're not going to feel overwhelmed. Again, for your personal life, you can ask that same question. For your relationship, you can say, hey, what's one thing I can do with my partner? What's one thing I can start doing with my partner that can make our relationship better? What's one thing I can do with my kids that can make us closer? So you can ask yourself that one question, just one thing. At your job, what's one thing I can do that can make me better at what I do at work? Your business or your finance, what's one thing I can do to get my finances in order? Maybe stop using credit cards. Maybe start paying off your debt. Maybe start um, doing a savings account. But this question is one thing. And this is, to be honest, this has been the, the secret of my success. And what this makes happens is it makes you focus on that one thing. And you keep working on that one thing till you master it. Once you master it, then you move to the next thing. When I went to uh, one of my jobs, I went there, I noticed that I was the, the first person that's gonna get, there were like six or so DDAs there, right? When I went there, I was a new guy. I knew, hey, if something comes, if they're gonna, if they're gonna fire people, I'm gonna be the first one to get fired. If they need to downsize or anything like that, I'm gonna be the first guy to get downside because I'm the new guy, I'm the younger guy here, and I'm, so I'm pretty game. fresh. Game. Yeah. So what I did was I, I started saying, okay, I'm going to learn the different other applications that are here. And I started with one by one. I, don't, I just didn't go and say, I'm just going to be a DBA. I started learning the other application. I'm saying, I'm going to be more efficient at that and more efficient at that. And within years, I've built up some skill set where I knew everything there. So I've gone from one of the most vulnerable people to one of the more stable people, one, uh, one of the, 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 the more stable. And that's how I was able to do it. I kept asking myself, what's one skill I can learn? What's one skill I can learn? So you can, you can actually make, become very powerful at your job by finding the critical things that are important that you can learn. Once you master them, it makes you more valuable. So that's the focusing question. Okay? So another problem is people don't know how to set goals. Right? So I'm going to show you guys what's called a goal setting to the now. So, and I'm going to give you guys all of these spreadsheets. Uh, you, can, you can download and you, you'll be able to work through the exercise. So, some people have never thought about their life past, what's, what they're going to do tomorrow or what they're going to do next month. But one thing you have to do is when you set goals is you have to you have to think far and come to the present. Okay? So the first thing you want to think about is your someday goal. What's your someday goal? Your someday goal is that goal that gonna take you five to ten years. That's your someday goal. So you're gonna sit and think, where do I wanna be five to ten years from now? That's where you start. Where do I want to be five to 10 years from now? Financially, uh, your, 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 your health, your family, where you want to live. You have to dream. You have to think. You have to sit there, and no one is going to show you. You have to go and really sit somewhere quiet and think about where do I want to be five years from now? You'll be amazed how many people go through life, and they never think this far ahead. Some of them think it's not possible. Some people think they just 
um, you know, they don't think that way, but you have to think like that. F four years ago, we were thinking about elections, right? Mm -hmm. Four years passed, now we're thinking about another election in November. Time flies, but if you're constructive and you've thought about, you have a plan, don't let that four year come, let that four year come to look back and say, you know what, man, yeah, I've gone somewhere. And then you're never too old to do this. You can be 15 years old, you can be 50, 60 years old, it's never too late to do this. But you have to dream. Everything you've seen in life right now, everything you touch, everything that you come, it was in somebody's head. It was a dream that they made come to fruition. So why can't you do that for your own life, right? So you start by five, years, five to 10 years, where do you want to be from now? Then you say, okay, let's say you say you want to be making, since you can quantify, some things cannot be quantified, like, you know, but some things can be quantified, like uh, financial, right? So you say you want to, in five years, you want to be making $250,000. That's, that's very doable. So that's very doable. So what you got to do is, is now saying, okay, this is your five-year goal. In five years, this is where you want to be financially, right? So now here, so this, okay, so your someday goal is 10 years. That's your 10 someday goal, 10 years. Now you got to come back and say, here's where the goal setting starts to link. Where do I need to be in life? Where do, where do I need to be five years from now for me to be in line to reach this 10 year goal? Then you write those things down. Where do I need to be five years from now for me to hit that 10 year goal? Okay, what do I need to be? What do I need to do? What do then you come to the one year. What do I need to accomplish this year to, for me to be in line for my five year goal? Right? And once you've done, once you have this one year goal, you now break it down. Okay, I have a one year goal. What do I need to do this month? What goals do I need to accomplish for me to be in line for my one year goal? Then you break it down. What do I need to be doing this week for me to be in line with my monthly goal? And then every day, what do I need to be, what do I need to be doing this week, this day, today, to be in line with my, you see how they're all attached? And then you ask yourself, you wake up, you just feel like, oh, let me go watch TV or let me just do something like, am I, what should I be doing right now for me to hit my weekly goals? And I'm going to give you a planner. If you print, if you print out that planner and you, you use it every week, what's going to happen is you're going to see every month what you've done, you're going to you build what's called that momentum, that domino effect. You're gonna see how every day you're doing something towards that big goal that you have. And every day you get closer and closer to it. And then you leave and you see, you can go back and review it a month from now, two, two months from now, three months from now, how you're progressing. Is it gonna be perfect? No. Are you gonna make need to make some changes? Yes. But it keeps you focused on that one goal, big goal that you have in your life. This is what separates some of the most successful people so people that are not doing so well, successful people, if you don't believe me, go, go to YouTube, just watch video on people like Elon Musk, uh, Steve Jobs, people like um, uh, Bezos, um, all these people, Oprah Winfrey, you know, some of the actors, you don't even have to be, anyone who's really good at what they do, just pay attention. They have a focused mentality of what they want and they work every day towards getting that. So this is what goal setting should be like. But, so again, the question you're going to ask yourself, right, is some goals are artificial goals. You may think you want it, but they're not goals. They're not goals that you really want. So there's a proof test of how you can make sure the goals you're setting are actually what you really want. So how do you do that? You put them through this question. Why is this goal important to me? That's a question. Oh. I want a Maserati. Do I really? Okay, why is that goal important? Is that a goal? What will accomplishing this goal do for my life? The big goals will have major impact in your life. What will happen if I don't accomplish this goal? If you set a goal, if you do it, you don't do it, doesn't have much effect in your life, that's not a big enough goal. So this is like what's called your smoke screen test. The test that pushes you to say, hey, this is not a good goal. So this one, is gonna make sure that you're setting the right goal. Now, once you set the goal, 
you got to do what's called time blocking. You got to set time aside for your goal. The thing is about goals, you don't, they don't have to occupy your entire life. You can still go and do things that you want, but you have to set up the goals and you have to set time for you to do it. Remember when I started earlier on the slides, I talked about what I could do and what I should do. The should part, you should set time for those things you should be doing. So here's a typical day of a person who's not very productive. The important things in their life, they spend maybe one sixth of it the day doing that. Now here's an example of a person who's productive. They will block a specific time and they work on that important thing. And once they're done, then they have the rest of the day to do whatever they want. So uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of um, Stephen King. He's a, he's a famous like writer. He writes like horror, horror, horror books, scary books. And Stephen King, what he does, he says in the morning, he wakes up from like nine to 12. He goes in his office with his typewriter. He turns everything off and then he just writes because that's how he makes his living. And once he's done by 12 o'clock, he's done writing. He can just come back and do whatever the heck he wants to do. But he makes sure he spends time doing that thing that's most important to him. So that's what you do, time blocking. You set time and try to set the same time so your mind starts to be, develop a habit of doing the same thing day and day, day in and day out. Because what happens is when you introduce something new to your mind, your, 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 your mind is going to fight it first. Let's say you want to start exercising. The first time your mind is going to be like, ah, this is not, I'm not used to this. It's going to, it's going to come up with all type of excuses. Man, let me just watch TV for five minutes. Next thing you know, you watch it for an hour. And then your mind makes excuses because you introducing something to it. It hasn't, it's not used to. But a week goes by, your mind is still fighting it, right? You got to push yourself to go to the gym. But after a month or two months, do you need to push yourself that much to go to the gym anymore? No, because your mind is now accepting that, hey, this is now his new routine. He's used to doing this now. So that's how habits are built. You have to first have that power to push. But if you're consistent, you're doing it at the same time, your mind starts to know that this is what happens. And then he accepts it. But it doesn't happen overnight. You have to keep at it. Okay, so how do you time block? Okay, so your time block is you have to you make time off. It doesn't mean that this goal occupies your entire life. So what you can do is you're gonna time block for your one thing, that thing that's important. You're gonna time block for your timing, and you're gonna protect that time block. I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. This is a typical calendar of a time blocking. So the one thing you set it on the calendar and I'll give you a calendar, by the way, for you to print out, you can use, right? And then what you're going to do, you see here, that one thing you're doing every day, you plan, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. But even that you have vacation time, life happens. It doesn't mean that this thing is going to, you know, you've planned to go out on vacation. You can still go to your vacation and have your fun and do what you do, the fun life, right? But you can see here, the Sundays you plan that weekly planning. Hey, what, what are the things I need to get done this week for my monthly goal? So you plan yourself, these are those times. And then you set time for your one thing. And you see here in this example, the one thing is this person here is doing it from 8 a.m. to noon. They make sure they're spending those four hours, whatever, spending time doing what needs to be done. Okay, so this would be like how you plan your, you, you, you block your time. And here's the cool thing. Every day you, you do your time block, exit out. Put this, put this calendar somewhere where you can see it. So it, it motivates you. Um, there's a comedian called Jerry Seinfeld, and he, he's one of the richest comedians, right? And another comedian who was starting up came and asked him, like, hey, man, what tip would you have for me, for me to be, like, successful like comedy? He said it's simple. Every day, write a joke. Every day, just write one joke, Right? For a comedian, comedian needs material, they need jokes, right? Mm -hmm. Some jokes are gonna be good, some jokes are gonna be bad. But the key is, every day write a joke. And no matter what, don't break that chain. Write a joke every day. If you do that in a year, you're gonna have 365 jokes. So for a comedian, it seems like a simple thing, but that's what it takes for him to be successful. Mm -hmm. And once you start doing this, you put that X there, you see it on the wall, it pushes you so every day you don't want to break that chain. You want to keep at it. The little things, you have to play mind games with your mind to, to, to make it fun. 
when you've done like 30 days, you're like, ah, I don't want to break this chain. It keeps you motivated and it keeps you developing that habit. So this is something you can do. Now, um, we all in life, there are a lot of distractions and we have to know how to fight off distractions. Distractions from people that are around us, distractions from ourselves, distractions from technology. We have to figure it out. So how do you, once you've set the time block saying from this date, from this time to this time is when I'm going to be doing my work or studying or whatever it is you're working on. You have to build what's called a bunker, number one. The next one is store provision. The next one is sweep for mind, minds. And then the next one is endless support. What do I mean by that? Sweeping for mind is, is like uh, uh, build a bunker. So build a bunker is like a, like I like to study in a quiet place. If I'm home sometimes and then people are making a lot of noise or I'm being distracted, that may not be the perfect place for me to be studying. So I may find a go to a library or something, somewhere quiet where I can, right? That's the bunker, an area where it's quiet, you're not gonna get distracted. That's kind of will be a, a nice bunker. Okay, so you build that bunker that, uh, 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 so that's up to you wherever that is, a place where you can focus on what you need to focus on. And another thing is stuff for provision. When I'm studying, I'm working on certain things, you know, bring water, bring everything you need around you. If you like moving, so you don't get distracted, get everything close to you. So you are in one place, because remember the distraction thing, every time you get up to do something, when you come back, your mind has to rearrange. So do everything, get everything you need in, in the same area. Sweep for minds. My biggest mind is my phone. You know that WhatsApp, bing, coming in, and then you watch it. You say, let me just check my message. Next thing you know, you've been there for like 30 minutes just going through WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I turn off my notification. When I want to go on WhatsApp, I'll go and look, but I turn off that automatic notification that comes because I know myself. I'm going to force myself to look at it. Or if you want, when you're studying, turn your phone off. The world is not going to go, go down in one hour. You can come back after an hour or whatever of doing your work and check your phone and then go back to it. So whatever that distraction is for you, make sure that you sweep, you sweep it out. And then, like I said, mine is phone. So I turn my phone off. I put it on silent and I turn it off. Uh, and then, and then all, all of my notifications, I don't, I don't get that Facebook instant notification. So I'll go on, uh, on WhatsApp, I mean, and I'll check it periodically. But it used to be a big distraction for me. So only you know what your distractions are. And when that time comes for you to focus, do that. And here's the other thing, enlist support. If you're doing something, you're taking a course, you wanna make your life better, tell somebody, somebody who cares about you, somebody who wants you to succeed. Because what happens is they're gonna hold you accountable. You will ask, hey, how's that class coming? You know, how you, that kind of support goes well. But also be wary of some people, some people, They'll be close to you, but every time they see that you want to improve your life and you're going to, they feel like you're going to be better, they start to discourage you. And my rule is if I tell you something that's productive, that's something that's going to help me, you start bad mouthing it, we can still be friends, but that's the last time I tell you about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So pick those people carefully. Your friends, pick somebody who really cares about you, they will motivate you. There's nothing wrong. Like, for example, you say I'm taking an IT course. And you say it's going to cost you 3000 or whatever. There's nothing wrong with somebody saying, that's kind of expensive. Make sure you just get your money worth. That's not a bad advice. But what do you know about IT? You know, you think you're going to learn that? Nah. You're not going to, you know, did you study that? Anytime somebody start telling these kind of things, they uh, be wary of, of telling them about your goals because they're going to demotivate you. So find people who, who are going to help you, who are going to hold you accountable. If you see you exercise, some that person will be like, hey, you, how you how are you exercising going? How is those are the kind of people you you want to enlist their support? Okay, so it's very very helpful. Now, accountability is a big thing. If you're not accountable to yourself, how can you be accountable to other people? So always be accountable to yourself first. Or if you if you promise make a promise to yourself, try to hold it. Now, do we always succeed? No, but just Practice make perfect. Start setting little goals to yourself, for yourself. So they did a research saying, when you write, people who write goals, one thing is your, your brain, first of all, your brain doesn't, um, 
is bad at remembering things. It's good at coming up with ideas, but it's bad at remembering those ideas. How many of you before have gotten an idea to do something and you forget about it? And then two, three years down the road, somebody else is doing it, making good money from you. Like, man, I had that idea. The only difference is that person acted on the idea you didn't. So what thing that you should get in the habit of doing is walk around with a notebook, right? And you have an idea, write it down. Do not leave it in your head. You're going to forget. Write it down, even if you don't have the means to do it now. Maybe right now you don't have the skill set. Maybe right now you don't have the finances. But write it down on a piece of paper, on a, on a notebook, and then keep it. And then once in a while, just go through that notebook. So two things happen. Number one, as you grow, you start to see how your thinking was as you mature. Number two, that idea that you had, maybe you didn't have the money for or the skills, now you do. And you can go and say, no, let me try to implement this. But ideas come and they go, come and go. So writing down, something happens. And research shows that when you write down a goal, you're almost 40% more likely to reach that goal by just writing it down. Now, here's what happens again. Individuals with written goals and weekly accountable accountability. So which means you set a goal and say every week I'm going to be working on this and you every week you track it. That percentage jumped to almost 80%. So I would take an 80% chance of succeeding in anything than, uh, 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 and, and then not. So write down your goals, write it down and then plan on paper how you're going to reach that goal. Your success rate goes up. So there's a story of research I heard about that says um, there was a graduating school or uh, MBAs from Harvard University. They were graduating. And what happened was the, 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 the researchers asked all of them, hey, how many of you have goals? And basically everybody raised their hands, right? And then they asked him again, how many of you have written goals and plan written goals and have written how you're going to reach your, your goals? And 3% of the class said they've written the goals and they've written a plan how exactly how they're going to reach that goal. Mind you, these are all people that are very smart and they have, they all have the same mental capacity because they do in graduate school that there's a, there's a requirement. You have to pass for you to go to graduate school. So here's what happened. They went back uh, 20 years after that class graduated They went back and asked the surviving members of like who um, to see how they did in life. So some things, some certain things you cannot calculate, but certain things you can. So they look at the net worth, the financial status. They found out that the three percent who wrote the goals were worth more financially than the other ninety-seven percent combined. So that just tells you like some of the power of like writing your goals and sticking with it because it forces you, it makes your brain start to not only stay focused, but you keep working towards reaching that goal. So write down your goals. So basically, the ultimate question now is, what do I want and how can I accomplish it? So that is the first set of slides. Uh, any questions so far? I'm going to open it up for a quick question and answer for this part. Um, let me see if I can unmute people. So I think everyone is on mute. So the scenario you just spoke about, that would have fallen under the could have. Do we, do we say that? Should have. Should have. Should have. Should have, um, um, should, not should have, could do or should do. Mm -hmm. That's a, the two questions you ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Should and could. What I should do mm -hmm. is one thing. What I could do is another mm -hmm. thing. I could, I could go ride a bike. I could go do some, any task but what should I be doing? The, the things you want to focus on is what should I be doing? When you say, what should I be doing right now with my time? That's a different answer you're going to get that what I could, could I be doing? So focus on your should. The should is getting sleep at night, eating right, exercising if possible, learning every day, trying to learn something, walk towards your goal. Those are the things you should be doing. The things I could be doing is I could be watching TV. I could be on social media all day. So that means just could have, you could have, but it doesn't. But it doesn't necessarily mean you can do. You, have you, should, to do you it. should be doing it. Yeah. It's like, you know, some people who run. They're very, very busy. They're running. They're running around every day. But at the end of the day, you say, "What did I actually do? What, what's actually meaningful that I accomplished?" But then you have some people who look like they're not doing anything. They're just cool, but they do so well because it's the focus. Some people are running around working a lot on things that are not important. So here's sometimes what happens. 
you have a plan to study. Somebody calls you, hey man, I'm moving. Can you come help me move right now? Like now you, it's an emergency for them. But you have to leave what you're doing to go help them. Like, you know what? I'll be there maybe in an hour or two, but I need to finish this. So they, sometimes we have to learn also how to say no to certain things. You know, we have to learn how to say no to certain things. Yeah, somebody has a question, somebody raise your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, somebody has a question online? Okay, I've, uh, I'm allow okay, I'm allowing you guys to, to talk. No questions? Okay, so um, let me go back to the portal. On the portal here, there's a goal. So these are the, there's a goal setting. Um, there's a goal setting thing here, right? There's a goal setting thing here. And um, you, can, you can go through that. Now, I want to play something real quick. So this is a video I also want to play. It's about six minutes. After this video, we'll take a 10 minute break and then we'll start to actual technical stuff for the day, okay? So, but I want to show, it's always important that we have the right mindset when you're learning something. So here, under the goal setting, I have to add something else to it. Uh, so give me like a, 30 minutes or so after the class, I'll add another document here. But this is the stuff you're gonna download. When you download it, you have three things, a monthly planner, a calendar. And so this will be like the personal calendar for your annual goal. I will explain more of this. Uh, um, and this is what you're gonna fill out. So if you make a print out of this, this tells you your yearly goal. You can write your top three personal and your top three professional goals. And then here, what are you trying to accomplish for this month to reach your yearly goal? And here, we track weekly for a month what, what things am I doing accomplishing every week. So every week, just print this out, and it will help you. There's another one I'll show you guys. Uh, it has the five-year someday goal. So you start with that. And you, after that, the top three goals you pick from there, you, you bring here. And then from here... So this is one of the assignments you can print out. If you don't have a way to print it out, just write it on a book and then just follow this, uh, uh, this, this stuff. But I wanna show you guys another uh, uh, interesting video. It's gonna be about, like I said, five, six minutes. But um, uh, I think that also kind of helps with you uh, reaching your goal. And then the, the main point of this video, these are the key points that you can always, in case you just wanna remember it. So I'm gonna play that now. Hello. Oh, there you are. Seems you've been hunkered down in the old. You know, sometimes call me a, a motivation. But I want you to know right up front, I'm not a motivational speaker. I couldn't pass the height requirement. <laughs> Could motivate anybody. My employees actually call me a big motivational speaker. When I talk motivational speaker, I went out and found out some information about success, and I'm just here to pass it on. And my story started over 10 years ago on a plane. I was on my way to the TED conference in California, and in the seat next to me was a teenage girl, and she came from a really poor family. They wanted to get somewhere in life. And as I tapped away on my computer, she, she kept asking me questions. Then out of the blue, she asked, are you successful? I said, no, I'm not successful. Carol is my hero. Now there's a big step. He lost a leg to cancer, then ran thousands of miles and raised millions for cancer research. Bill owns his own plane, doesn't have to sit next to some kid asking him questions. <laughs> then I told her about some of the stuff I'd done. I love communications, and I've won lots of awards in my 
Love me. And I still sometimes win my age group. Old farts over 62. <laughs> my fastest marathon is two hours and 43 minutes to run at 26 miles or 42 kilometers. I've run over 50 marathons at all seven continents. This was a run my wife and I did up the Inca Trail in Machu Picchu in Peru. And to qualify for the seven continents, we had to run a marathon in Antarctica. But when we got there, it didn't look nice and calm like this. Yes, the winds were so high we couldn't get to shore. So we started pulling the miles for the sun, so that it seemed to be calm. And then we tired 26 years of work. 22 laps around the deck of that little boat. My wife and I have also climbed two of the world's seven summits, the highest mountains on each continent. We climbed Ashton Cogburn, the highest mountain on the American continent, and Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa. Well, to be honest, I peaked my way to the top of Kilimanjaro. I got altitude sickness. I got no sympathy from my wife. She passed me and did a lap around the top while I was still struggling up there. In spite of that, we're still together and have been for over 35 years. I'd say that's a successful day. So I said to the girl, well, you know, I guess I have had some success. And then she said, okay, so are you a millionaire? Now I didn't know what to say. Because when I grew up, it was bad manners to talk about money. But I figured I'd better be honest. And I said, yeah, I'm a millionaire. But I don't know how it happened. I never went after the money. And it's not that important to me. She said, maybe not to you, but it is to me. I don't want to be poor all my life. I want to get somewhere. But it's never going to happen. I said, well, why not? She said, well, you know, I'm not very smart. I'm not doing great in school. I said, so what? I'm not smart. I barely passed high school. I had absolutely nothing going for me. I was never voted most popular or most likely to succeed. I started a whole new category, most likely to fail. But in the end, I did OK. So if I can do it, you can do it. And then she asked me the big question. Okay, so what really leads to success? I said, gee, sorry, I don't know. I guess somehow I did it. I don't know how I did it. So I get off the plane and go to the tech conference. And I'm standing in a room full of extraordinarily successful people in many fields. Business, science, art, health, technology, the environment. Hey, um, you, you guys having issues hearing the, the video online? Sounds good. Yeah. I think so. You guys are good? Yeah, Not really. Good. Not really. But it's a little bit like slow. Okay, it's buffering? Yeah. yeah. Okay. When they hit me, how about now? I ask them what helps them succeed and find out what really leads to success. The volume is too much. It's better now. Talk to me. I'm not a famous journalist. I'm not even a journalist. So I was ready to. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop it because some people are complaining it's not clear. But again, you see, it's all right. It's a link here, so when you go to the portal, you can actually watch it from from here. Okay. So uh, I know we just went through a lot, so I'm gonna give people about um, I'm gonna give people about uh, ten or so minutes just to kind of regroup, and then we'll start on the next part of the. the, the Any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to pause the recording for now. All right, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. All right, okay. All right, so 
part one, I, again, I felt like it's always important about goal settings. Uh, it helps you become a better learner. And like I said, even if you don't take anything from this class, you just practice that. Call me back in six months and uh, let me know how it goes. And I always um, encourage feedback. If you um, have stuff that works for you, um, always have that discussion. So please, please, please uh, make sure you do that. That's your first assignment for the day. Uh, so make sure our next class will be on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I believe the same link should work, but um, so I need everyone to do that assignment before, uh, before that. And it's not for me, it's for yourself. And that just tells you, if you're serious, you do it. If you're not, then you won't, but please, please, please do. All right, that being said, let's move to the next part. Um, so uh, welcome to this IT Fundamental. Oops. So basically, what are we going to talk about? Uh, this session basically is for anyone who is um, who's scared of computers. Uh, there are a lot of people here who are so like, you say computer, they start having a nervous breakdown. So um, hopefully after today, your fear will be less in a little bit. Uh, you feel like you're lost when you're dealing with a computer. Uh, you want to learn more about the basics of computers and uh, some of the terms you're going to hear are functions, security of a computer, okay. Um, it's also for you or any relative, any person who wants to just get more familiarity with, um, with a computer, okay. So uh, what you're gonna expect from this lesson. Uh, we're gonna learn how Windows PC work. We're gonna understand some basic uh, terminologies. We're gonna understand some of the basic controls of a computer. And also we're gonna work on parts. This is very important. You have to kind of memorize. There's a few parts in a computer I want you to, to memorize and always know how they work, okay? So, um, Okay, so what not to expect, right? So now we've talked about what to expect, what we're not gonna expect. This is more of an introductory class, so don't expect to uh, get a certification. It's not one of those. Um, we're not gonna talk about Apple, uh, you know, it's a joke here, or pineapple, you know, Apple computer, but it's a, it's a geeky joke, but uh, we're not gonna be talking about Macintosh and Apple, but uh, I will touch base a bit about that. Uh, to know everything. You're not going to know everything about the Windows PC today. No, that's not going to, you know, you got it takes time to learn these things. Okay. Also, we're not going to teach you how to do, how to hack. If you want to do, you want to learn how to hack and all of these things, take a cybersecurity course. Uh, and we do offer cybersecurity as well. Okay. Uh, also, I'm not going to show you how to build a computer. This is not that technical. And um, so these are some of the, uh, the stuff not to expect. Now, let's start with it. Uh, what's a computer, right? What's a computer? Now, the technical term of a computer is a computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data. It has the ability to store, retrieve, and process data. So think about it. The key term here is it's electronic. Uh, let me put my animation on so I can write. So the key term is it's, it's electronic device, right? So in that definition, it means like anything like uh, that's electronic. A calculator is electronic. It can be a computer, right? Kind of. Right, but also it what? It manipulates information or data. Once it manipulates information or data, it also has the ability to store it, to retrieve it, and to process it. So in that case, any device that can do this thing, electronic device that can manipulate data, it can also store it somewhere for you, 
And when you want to see it, it can go get it for you. Then it can process things for you. It's a computer. Okay? So one thing is I am not a technical person, right? So what, how I learn things is I try to make it personable. I try to think about how I use certain things and make it personable so it can stick. Okay, if you have questions about cybersecurity, uh, we'll talk about those questions later, okay? I know people have questions, just hold tight. After the class, I'll open it up for questions and we'll go through that, okay? So that's the major part of what a computer is. Okay, uh, somebody has a question, Abdul? So, uh, so we have different type of computers, right? We have a personal computer. Uh, what can we do with the computer? These are some of the stuff we do. And again, when we start, if it may seem very rudimentary, but remember that most, everyone is at a different level. Some people may already know some of these basic things. What are we doing? We're gonna build. It's a two weeks class, right? So we start with the basics of a computer. So even if you know something or you feel like at the beginning it's a, it's a bit past what you know, just stick with it. I always believe that you, you may know it, but you may pick up one or two things you didn't know about it, something before. So be patient. There are different levels here. There are people who are brand new to computers and there are some people who are more knowledgeable who work with computers, but just be patient because you always have to have a foundation. And it, it, to be fair, we have to build that foundation. So even if this is kind of very basic for you at some point, just hang tight. I guarantee you it will get to a point where you're gonna be, we're gonna be learning some things, right? So just, just hang in there. Um, so basically a computer can do several things. We use computers to make documents, right? We use the browser to go on the web um, internet and check for things, right? We even use computers to play games, video games and, and, and that kind of stuff, right? We use them to edit our pictures. We use them to create spreadsheets for like uh, accounting pro processes and stuff like that. And also we use it to store data. You have things that are important, you store them in a, in a, in a, in a computer. So these are some of the basic functions we, we use for a computer and uh, making videos, watching videos, some of this stuff we, we, we use computers for. Now, so there are different type of computers. A desktop computer, which basically stands on top of a desk, a laptop computer, which goes on your lap, the smaller ones, and it seems like these days everybody has a laptop, right? and a tablet. So what's a desktop? Many people know desktop computers that where they used to work at home. Uh, you place them on top of a desktop and usually come with parts like a, you know, a, a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. So this is basically what uh, you call a desktop, right? And laptops, secondary type, which are more flexible, you can move around with, look something like this. You sit on your lap and you work with these two kind of uh, outside, indoors, outdoors, in your car, wherever, they're mobile. And the tablet, which since the invention of um, the ah. Apple iPad, everyone is now using tablets, right? So tablets are like computers, but they don't have a keyboard. The keyboards are built in and you can do several things as playing games or, or everybody know what, what you do with, uh, with, with tablets. But again, the major difference between a tablet and a, and a, uh, and a, uh, um, a laptop is the laptop has the physical keyboard you can type with and the tablet, the keyboard is, is, is on the touchpad. So these are the key things as far as um, a tablet. But again, there's certain things that, uh, we don't think about the mobile phones, 
the smartphones. The smartphones are becoming very, very dominant in our day-to-day -day lives. Please mute yourself. Um, so what's, going, what's been happening is tablets are becoming more Tablets are becoming more, uh, I mean, cell phones are becoming more useful than ever before. Um, if you think about it, before the, uh, before the smartphones, we had what? We had several things, right? Uh, if you wanted to listen to music, right? You had what? You had a CD player. Uh, let me keep this showing again. You had a CD player. or MP3 player, right? When you want to drive, go somewhere, right? You had to go buy a GPS system, right? Right? Okay. When you wanted to take pictures, you had to go get a camera, right? So, uh, you want to go read your emails. You needed a computer, right? You, uh, you want to watch TV, you want to watch movies. TV, right? So what the phone, phone company, the, the cell phone, smartphone has done is it's kind of cannibalized all these things, right? And we notice we use more of our mobile device than anything else. It's becoming, it's centralized in everything. That's why the cost of them are going up as laptop and other things are coming down because our cell phones are everything. You can literally do your work on your cell phone nowadays. So the cell phone is becoming the most powerful computers in our hand. And it's killing a lot of industries because all of these things before you had to go buy several things. Now they're all being consolidated just in a mobile phone. So here's what I'm telling you. If you can learn to mess around with your phone and play with it, you can learn computer. You've been using a computer. You've been playing with a computer. You've been dealing with it. So if anybody's scared that I, I don't know anything about computer, I, don't, I can't learn it, this is, a perfect example that tells you that once you start playing with something, you can learn it. If you just understand those basics of how they work. So today is to kind of show you some of the basic of how these things work. And once you understand how it works, then you can, we can build from that. Okay. So, so don't get scared as far as uh, you think you don't know any of these, uh, these things, but you've been using them. So uh, here are the most parts, components of a computer. So we have the hardware. You hear this word a lot, hardware versus software. Hardware versus software. So what's a hardware? A hardware is the physical device, the physical thing you can touch with your hands. That's a hardware. The, the laptop itself, when you pick it up, it's a hardware. It's the things like the mouse. The, uh, the physical structure of a computer is a hardware. The things that are put inside of the computer, those are all hardware. The things you can literally touch. If you just remember that, it will solve your issue as far as what's the difference between a hardware and a software. The hardware is the physical components of a computer. The software are the things, the program, that are inside the computer that you use. And you can see here, like some of the software, you have what? Microsoft, which is the operating system. Uh, uh, you see this, this the, the, the tools that you click on, the application, these are the software. They are programs that allow you to do certain things. So hardware, software, hardware, physical thing I can touch, I can pick it up. It goes in software, the things I'm using that allow me to do specific tasks with the computer. Those are the software. So if you just remember those two, you're good. Okay. Now, what are the physical components of the actual computer itself? So the first thing is this here, they call it the central processing unit, which is like this, this, this box case, right? But it's also, it's misleading a bit because there's also something in the computer that actually is called that. But every time somebody says, hey, can you hand me the CPU? 
they mean this box sometimes. So you have to be, you have to think about it on the conversation you're having. If you have a desktop and somebody say, hey, pass me the CPU. This is the box they're talking about. And then they'll ask you, pass me the monitor or the keyboard. So what's, what's the CPU? We'll get, to, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Yeah, hold that thought, we'll get to that. So, uh, so this is the particular CPU when they're talking about the computer itself, right? So that's just the case. And every computer must have a power supply, which is called a power bank that gives it electricity, just like any other TV or any device, it must have some source that gives it electricity or else it's not gonna work. So the power supply is always important for a computer. And inside of a computer, you have what's called the motherboard. Now, if I go back, this is, what the, this is the motherboard right here. The motherboard is the central part of a computer where everything else get connected. So it can work together as one unit. That's the motherboard, okay? So the motherboard, everything connects to the motherboard. And then you have what's called a RAM. The RAM stands for random access memory. And a processor. So what I'm doing, I'm just listening and I'm gonna to explain to you guys in depth as far as what, uh, what all these things are, okay? Now, remember when they call this CPU, the central processing unit? The processor is a CPU. The processor is the brain of a computer, okay? And then you have the hard drive. The hard drive itself is used to store information, data. So I'm gonna transition, I'm gonna draw a little picture how you can remember some of these things, right? So these are the basic things I want you to get out of the, the major parts of a computer. So, uh, so here's your computer. Right, and this is for anything, the phone, your tablet, they have a particular thing. The motherboard is a case that has this in here. It's where everything gets installed. Everything gets put to it so they work together as one. So how I think about it is the mother, mother and a board because it flies like a board, right? So the motherboard, I think of it like your mom, right? The mother of a family. They get everybody together. The mom is like, let's get together. Let's work as a family. Let's just, so if these things are all separated, they don't work together. But when you put them on the motherboard, they all work together as one unit. So that's what you got to remember. The motherboard, MB, is the thing where everything gets connected to so they can work as a unit. Your phone has it. Any, basically most electronic device has some type of motherboard where the different things can be installed on so they can work together as a unit. So besides that, there are three other things I need everyone to kind of memorize. The three things that are important in the computer. One of them is the hard drive, HD. The hard drive is used for storage. Storage only. So when you go and you download pictures, you download your movies, those movies, have to get stored inside the hard drive. So some of you, when you go buy a phone, right? You're gonna say, hey, how much storage does this thing have? That storage you're talking about is the hard drive. If you go buy a phone that only has like uh, 30 gig of RAM and you like to put a lot of music, it, it gets full. Once it's full, you gotta start doing what? You gotta delete. So what happens is the more storage you want on your phone, the more your phone is gonna cost you. So the hard drive drive is one thing, storage. So pictures, movies, your data, all of these things, your uh, get stores on the hard drive. That is the job of the hard drive, store data. So people still can't hear me? Okay, okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So, hard drive, remember that. That's what everything gets stored onto. What? So, now that 
the hard drive is where everything gets stored to. The next part is, so HD is a hard drive, storage. The second one is RAM. We stand for random access memory. Random access memory. The reason why your hard drive, your RAM is important, this is where you see things. Remember when you watch, when you go on YouTube, like uh, you see sometimes a little buffer. What he's doing is taking the movie from the YouTube server, it's putting it in your RAM. So right now what you see on your computer, these things you're seeing, these programs that are open, they get open inside the RAM. So remember, this guy, the hardware, hard drive, just to store information. It puts the information there and store it there for permanent keeping. The RAM is what's known as temporary storage, short-time storage. It doesn't, the, 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 what you put in there doesn't stay there for a long time. This is why when you buy a computer that doesn't have a lot of RAM, as soon as you open one or two programs, your computer gets slow because when you have a, let's say you, you this is your computer. And then this is the hard drive. Remember the hard drive stores all the files. So you have in here, Facebook program is stored here. Also Microsoft Word is stored here. If your computer doesn't have enough RAM, when you say open Facebook, guess where it's gonna open Facebook? It's gonna open Facebook inside the RAM. So now let's say this Facebook program is taking all this space in RAM. Then you wanna open another program, Microsoft Word, you wanna write. Now Microsoft program will take the rest of it. All of this Microsoft program will take. Now you're only left with a little bit of RAM. So what starts to happen as this guy gets full, the RAM gets full, your computer gets slow because it doesn't have enough room, it's tight. So it will keep hanging. But so the thing you gotta remember, the RAM, all it does is it's a temporary storage. It's where when you open, you, you say, I wanna open this program. The program gets open inside of the RAM. That is it. That, they call it random access memory because as you're using them, it's randomly up it's randomly being used by the, the devices that are open in it. So right now here I have Facebook, right, open. When I'm going with Facebook, the RAM is now, we, it's been open in RAM. So when I wanna go to another program, it gets open in there. Very, very important that everybody understands that the RAM job is where programs get open. Anytime you wanna do something, it opens. Right now I have a Zoom session going on. I have PowerPoint open. I have like three or four applications open. They are all open inside of that RAM. So that's the second part. Hard drive, storage only, it stores permanent storage. Think about it this way, hard drive, permanent storage. RAM, temporary storage. It's when you open a program, that program gets open inside the RAM. Everything you see on your computer right now is being open inside your RAM. You hear? It's a random access memory. That's what it stands for, right? So, you know, whenever your computer gets slow, what's, what's the thing they tell you to do? Turn it off and turn it back on, right? When your computer is slow or your phone is slow, whenever your phone is acting weird, the easiest thing to fix it is turn it off, turn it back on. The reason why, this is temporary storage. When you turn your computer, so right now, let's say your RAM is full. You have like all these programs that are open. So now it's struggling because it doesn't have enough room. When you turn it off, as soon as you turn your computer off, what, gets ha what happens is the RAM gets wiped off completely clear. So when you open it again, there's nothing in there. That's why they call it temporary storage because when your computer goes off, it wipes it out. Does that make sense? So when you go buy a computer, they say your computer only have four gig of RAM, that's okay. But if a computer that has eight gig of RAM, or 16 gig of RAM, you can open more things and it's not gonna struggle because it has room to take all of them in. So that's the key difference. And I'm reemphasizing this point, the hard drive is permanent storage. What you put on the hard drive doesn't get lost until you say, I wanna delete this picture. Just like when you take your phone, you take a picture, it's like, ah, that picture will always be on your phone till you say, I don't want it, I'm gonna delete it. When you delete it, you're deleting it from the hard drive. 
the permanent storage. But when you're watching that picture right now, when you're watching that picture, when you're going through watching that film, it's now inside the RAM, the temporary storage. But as soon as you close it, it gets out of there. Does that make sense? Any question? So computers are science. They, it's just like they, everything has a job to do, just like your body. Your hands have a job, your heart has a job. It's the same thing. But these three things I'm talking about are like the central, the critical thing of every computer. Okay, so that's the RAM. The final guy, which is the brain of the computer, is the processor. It's called a processor, which is that central, when they say CPU. CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit, also known as the processor. My handwriting is not the greatest, especially when I'm doing it on, the, on a whiteboard, you know. But, so, the CPU. So just like your brain, that's why they call it the brain of your computer. Just like your brain is what tells the rest of your part when and how to do things, that's what the CPU does. The CPU is, the, is, is what manages all the processes and what manages all of these things to work. But here's the thing. When the CPU wants to work, it likes to work in one place. It only works on things that are inside of your RAM. The processor likes only works most of the time inside things that are in your RAM. So when you open your Facebook app, right? When that app opens, it opens inside. This is Facebook. It opens inside the RAM. Now, when you say, play this video on, on, on Facebook, the processor is the one that's executing those commands. Everything you want to do is the processor. It's like, just think about it. The processor is the brain of your computer, just like you. Your brain is the one that tells everything, is the orchestrator, is the one that tells you everything what to do. That's the processor's job. That's why they call it the brain of the computer. It's one of the most expensive parts of a computer, okay? Because it does, uh, it's the one that manages everything. Okay? So just remember that. The processor does that work. So here's what goes on. The processor works so hard, it gets very, very hot. And the more it works, the harder it gets. You, you know sometimes when you have your computer on and you feel that hot breeze coming out and you hear the fan turning? That's the processor getting hot. That, that hot hair needs to be pushed out. So there's a fan that's blowing that outside of the computer or else it's gonna blow up. It's gonna, it's gonna be defective. It gets very, very hot. And you notice whenever your computer is working a lot and you have a lot of things open and the processor is trying to handle, handle all those things, your computer, that fan goes up. Please mute yourself. So it's that processor that's working and taking care of all of that's, that's, that's doing that. Okay? So these are the big parts. Please mute yourself. I'm going to mute everyone and uh, not allowed to uncheck it until I'm done. So the processor is what does all of that work, okay? So remember that the processor works only in what's in the RAM. So it's the brain of your computer. It's the one that manages and, and make requests that you uh, you're trying to do. So if you remember only those three parts from this lecture, I think you'll be fine, okay? So to recap, Hard drive equals storage. Permanent storage, permanent storage. RAM. RAM is temporary storage. Right? So RAM, RAM stands for random access memory. And Processor, which is the CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit, is the brain. These two guys work together. 
the, the processor works on things that are in RAM, right? So, but they have a problem. When you turn them off, they get wiped out clean. So how I, I like to think about these guys are like two brilliant professors that can do all type of work. They can do math problem. They can do any type of problem that you throw at them. But as soon as they go to sleep, they forget everything they worked on, right? They're smart, very, very smart, these two guys. They do brilliant work. They can do all type of math calculation, everything. But as soon as you turn them off, they go to sleep, they have amnesia, they forget. So if only these two guys were in a computer, every time you start working, you have to start from scratch each time. It can be crazy. Now, the hard drive is their brilliant assistant who writes down all the work that they do. So when they wake up, they say, hey, professors, this is where you guys left off. So they know where they left off, they can continue working. Everything has a usage. What's the use, right? Everything has a use. The processor's job is to just make you make a request. I want to do this. It does it for you. Okay? It's the brain. It's making the request that you need. Okay? Now, those requests that are being made, he, it has to take it. Like you saying, do this. It has to take it in queue. It's like you. If I say do this, you have to do five things, right? You're going to say, okay, what are the five things? Tell me. And then I try to do them in the order that you asked me to do them, right? So it's the same thing your brain works. But when you go to sleep, don't, don't your brain just rest? Right? Right. So again, it's the usage is to do your things. Now, the RAM is the football field where it, it does its work. It's the field that it does its work. Right? The hard drive job is, its job is stay, save. Your job is just to save what these guys work on. So everyone has a function. So when the computer is being built, every part in it has a job, just like your body. Everything in your body has a purpose. You will know that if something goes wrong, that's when you know that that finger, that little finger, when you hurt it, then you know this thing has a purpose because sometimes you want to grab something, it, it, it hurts. So every part in your body has a function. It's the same thing in a computer. Every computer, every part in a computer has a function. But the one that's doing the most work is the processor and it does it inside of the RAM. And when they do their work, their work needs to be saved because when you turn them off, they forget. It needs to be saved somewhere. The brilliant person that saved all their work is the hard drive. This is how they work. Now, the processor and the RAM, and these are all, by the way, these are all hardware. These are all hardware, right? Because they're all things you can physically touch. They're all things that are in a computer. These are all part of the hardware, right? So just remember that. Um, the other analogy I like to give for those that like soccer, the RAM is the football field, right? Right? The RAM is the football field. And when you're in the football field, that's the only place the processor, P, the player, works in. Now, if you have a cheap processor, these cheap computers that are like $100, $200, they, they give you a cheap processor that's not, that they can't do much. So compare that like having... A ten-year-old professional, uh, a ten-year-old playing football. But if you go buy the top-notch, like this, the, the Pentium Seven um, processors, that's like having Ronaldo. What Ronaldo can do, he can is he can do it faster, quicker, better than that ten-year-old. So when you buy in a processor, the processors are all come in a grade. The more expensive the processor, the more it can do quickly. The more it can make, it can, it, 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 so when your computer is fast, you buy an expensive computer. When you say open a program, everything works faster because the processor is, is faster. And then the RAM may be bigger. And also the hard drive may be giving you more room. So you pay for what you, you pay, what you, you get what you pay for. But the critical things, the cheap things in a computer now, hard drive, they're very cheap. Most hard drive come with 500 gig. They're not, the things that are expensive is the processor followed by the RAM. If I have a very fast processor, but I have a small RAM, right? That means my football field is not big enough. This guy can do a lot of work, but he has to keep waiting for things to come in, the memory for him to do the work. So when you buy a computer, you want to have a combination of enough RAM and enough processor for your computer to work fast. If you have a computer that has a fast processor, but you don't have enough RAM, it will still be fast, but it's not going to be efficient. If you go buy a lot of RAM for a computer, but then the processor is 
slow, it's still going to take time. Okay? So for all of you who want to learn IT, understand this concept. And these are all things that are you, you look for in your phone. You always want to know how much storage your phone has. How quick is this phone? Like when you move in, when you open an app, how long does it take to open? The cheaper phone, if you notice, they lag. The more expensive phones, as soon as you touch, bam, 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 because the processor is so much more powerful. Okay? Sure. So what happens if that information gets flushed out where? The hard drive. So sometimes so how, what happens is, uh, when your computer is going down, the question is, folks, if you didn't hear, he said sometimes your computer goes down, uh, it, like the battery dies and it shuts off. But as soon as you turn it back on, it will say, hey, restore this page, is, this is what you're working on. What happens is your hard drive has a mechanism. Sometimes when your computer is about to go down, it will flush everything that's in memory, store it in your hard drive. Sometimes, who has been working on a piece of, on a paper, writing a paper, and then the computer goes up? But when you come back, maybe the first line or two are there, but some of the other stuff didn't get there. Some of that information got saved on the hard drive. The rest of it didn't make it. But that's what happens. So everything is the hard drive. Again, the way I remember it is the hard drive is the brilliant assistant that writes on everything they do. And then the RAM and the processor are these brilliant professors that do all the work. Okay? So that's that. Okay, so that's enough about, um, uh, so that's enough about uh, that. Let's move on to the, the slides. I'm putting a lot of emphasis in it, in it because this is some concept that even people that are doing IT, that are in IT, some of them don't fully understand that concept and everything has a job. And this will also help you when you go to buy a computer. These are the things you wanna ask for. What's the RAM? What's the processor? You know, and then what, you know, these are the things that help you pick the computer. So when you, somebody goes sell you a computer, it's like, oh, it's a hundred dollars, it's $200. Look at those specs, make sure that you're buying what you, cause you're gonna, you're gonna get what you pay for. Okay, RAM, hard drive and processor. It's also known as a CPU. Okay. Um, so let's move on. So these are some of the things that come. These are called peripherals, right? Peripherals are other things that you attach to the computer, right? But in tablets and CPU and, and laptops, the peripherals are already attached to the unit itself. Okay, so you have a monitor. The monitor connects to the CPU so you can see what's on the screen. And everything that you've seen on the monitor here is being shown from where? Where is that? Nope, nope. What particular thing? What, what am I seeing? When I'm, what I'm seeing on a monitor, where, what, where is that stuff I'm seeing? Where is it? Look, where am I seeing it right away from? From the RAM. The RAM is where programs open up. When I'm watching that video, when I'm watching things, that's the feel. That's the football feel. So I'm seeing this. When I'm making changes to my computer, all of those I'm working in the RAM. So if I'm watching that video, the video right now is in RAM. If I'm typing my paper, the paper is in RAM. So the things, most of the things I'm seeing are what's being projected inside of the RAM. That's the field. And who's making the requests as I'm making, I'm pushing play, stop, change, edit. Who's making those requests? Who's making, who's, who's doing those work? The processor is doing those work. You see how everything works? Okay, good. So the keyboard basically used to give instructions. I'm typing. Hey, processor, blah, 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 I'm typing, do this for me. The processor says, okay, let me see what you want. The keyboard is what you're using to, to communicate, to give instructions to the processor to do certain things for you. Make sense? Okay. The mouse, just another tool to click. They call it a mouse because he has a tail. Now they're wireless, so they tail less mouse, but uh, that was the whole thing. Look at a little mouse running around, but it's a clicker. It's also a pointer to give, to actually execute things for you if you don't want to type them, okay? 
So I'm running through this a bit because these are basic things. But again, for those people who are new, we got to be fair so everyone kind of knows what these things are. All right, so we're done. That's the hardware. So the hardware has the internal hardware, which are the things that are inside the computer we've talked about. The main things are the motherboard, which is where everything gets put together. And then the RAM, the hard drive, the processor, everything has a job, right? So these are the hardware. But guess what? Can we use only those? No, they're not useful at all, the hardware by itself. If I have on a blank paper, what am I gonna do with it? There's, you can't do anything, it's just a hardware. It's like just this metal machine that's standing there. I can't do anything with it. This is where the operating system comes, the software. Software, there are two types of software. The first one is the operating system. So the operating system comes in. But before I explain about the operating system, let me tell you something about uh, computers, right? Computers only talk in numbers. Computer talk in something called numbers. And it, and it talks in two numbers. They're called binaries, which is zero and one. That is the language computers talk with each other. They only talk in zeros and one. You can see like, that's it? Zeros and one? Yeah. But those zeros and one comes in certain way. When they put together, they can do, they can literally create anything with just those zeros and one. If you put them in certain orders and certain length, right? So computer talks in what's called binary, zeros and one. By means two, right? Every time you hear the word by, they're talking about two. Binary means it's a number, but it's a two set of numbers only, zero and one, zero, one, zero, one. That's how computers talk. All computers talk in zeros and one. We don't speak zeros and one. They do, right? So there's a, something that needs to be like the translator between us and the computer. There needs to be a translator that we don't speak binary, but the computer speaks binary. It's just like you speak Chinese, the other person speaks Vietnamese or they speaks uh, Portuguese, right? What do you need for those guys to talk to each other? Online? Anyone from online who wants to answer that question? Or did I mute everyone? Okay, I had mute everyone. So who wants to answer that question? If you have two people speaking different languages, usually what do you need for, for them to be able to communicate? A translator. A translator. Absolutely. They need a translator. And that is when they talk about the operating system. That's what the operating system, that's one of the functions. It's a translator between you, the individual that's using the computer, and the machine itself. Because the machine speaks zeros and one, but you speak what? You speak whatever language you speak. So the operating system is what? does that translation between you and them. So here's your machine. On inside of it, you're gonna install the OS. This here is the OS. OS stands for operating system. So when you ever, whenever you hear the lingo, OS, what OS are you running? What OS, what operating system do you have? That's the operate, that's what it means. OS is the operating system. The operating system is the software, soft. Where remember software you don't touch, you cannot physically touch, you can only see it once the computer is turned on. The software is a program, a program. And what's the definition of a program? A program is something that does a task for you. A program is something that runs. Can you run that program? It's something that does a task or multiple tasks for you. It's a pro that's what a program is. It's a code that somebody writes. Right? So developer, a developer will write a code and that code does certain things for you. So the software is just a code, a program that allows the interpret what you want between you and the computer. The computer speaks what? Zeros and one. So the software, the operating system is what translates what you need with the computer. Is that clear? Make sense? 
So what are the type of software that are out there? You guys are used to it. The most popular one is Microsoft. Microsoft Windows. Microsoft Windows is one of the most popular in the world. I think it's about 90 or so percent of the computers, they use Microsoft Windows, right? So Windows is an operating software, operating system. You install it on the computer. So the computer, when you make it, the hardware, just nothing is there. And the first thing you have to do is install the operating system on it, which means all you've done is you've, you've, you have now a translator that can allow you to talk to the computer. That's all you've done, right? What are the other type of software that are available? Operating system. What are the other type of operating system? The people that have Apple, Mac, they yeah. use a different type of operating system called iOS. Again, we've all used it. When you have those Windows computers, you have, you have phones that have Windows system on it. You have phones with Apple on them, iOS. That's the operating system. Then what's the most popular operating system on the phone? On a, on a phone? Android. Android. And guess who owns Android? Google. Google owns Android. So, the, so again, operating system adjusts the translator. You use different translators, and they all come with them how they, they do the translation. But the operating system goes on the hardware, and now all you've done is you have a translator. That's all you've done. You still cannot use the computer yet to do things. You now have a translator. So the most popular, again, are micro Windows, Microsoft, MS, Windows. Okay, then you have Android, which is owned by Google. Then you have iOS, which is owned by Apple. And there's another one that's very popular but you guys don't know about which in future classes you're gonna learn about, which is called Linux. Which is owned by several different companies and people that build it. But in fact, this, this Linux here is what is based on this Linux that Apple and Android are kind of built on. But we'll explain that, but for now you've used these are the ones I want you to understand. These are the operating system. These are your translators that talk, help you, you and your computer talk and communicate. Okay? Oh, why is it that? How about Chrome OS? Chrome. So Chrome is what? Chrome is actually what? It's Android. Chrome, Chrome is Android. Google, and Chrome is owned by what? Guess what? That's Google Chrome. The software is Android. The, the Chrome software is the same thing that's on your mobile phone. It's the same software. It's the Android software. So Google Chrome is that. That's why uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of demo later for those that have Chrome, how to use it. But Google Chrome is basically, it's an Android system on a computer. That's why it's limited on what you can do. It doesn't, it's kind of limited because it's like having a, your mobile phone is exactly a mobile phone on a, on, a ta on a computer. It's the same operating system. Yeah, translator, yeah. You type, you say, I wanna go to Facebook. They all, are they sit between you and the hardware. So you say, I wanna open this program. It's gonna now switch what you tell it to binary zeros and one say, hey, do this. The computer now does what you want it to do. It's gonna tell it in binary, say, hey, I've done it. 
now it's going to tell you, hey, it, it's a translator. It, it's it translating between you and the computer because the computer talks in zeros and ones, and then you talk in your own language. So when you give it a command, the operating system is what going back and forth between you and the hardware. That is it. Okay? So there are two types of software that are being developed. You have what's called open source, and you have what's called closed source. Okay? Let me explain what open source and closed source is. Um, closed source, uh, any software. So an example of a closed source is Microsoft. Microsoft, another example of a company that have closed source is Apple. So Microsoft has Windows operating system, right? Windows, Microsoft Windows, right? I told you guys that's the operating system, OS. Apple has what? What's the name of Apple's? iOS. These are closed source. They're closed source, why? All this, the, the software, the program that operates is owned by them. They do not want you, they don't show you what, they don't show you what the code is that makes the computer talk to the other stuff like they do. And they tell you, you know, whenever you're installing things, you have to sign that agreement and say you're only going to use it for this purpose. You have to sign it. They don't want you going in the back door trying to figure out what they did for this computer to work that way. It's closed source. They, it's their own secret source. It's like, it's like you go to buy food, right? And you're like, mm, this rice or whatever is good. Can you show me how it was made? Like, mm -mm, that's my secret ingredient. You can just eat it, but don't, you don't need to know my ingredient in the back end. That's closed source. How the thing works, how it operates, they don't tell you. It's their own proprietary because they don't want competition to go and take it. That's what makes them special. That's why Microsoft looks different from iOS. It's closed source. They don't give you the back code. So you cannot customize it. What they give you is what you get. You cannot go and change it. Say, you know what? I want it to be looking this way. No, 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 no. They give you, what they give you is what you get. That's closed source. On the other side of this closed source is what's called open source. Open source is Android. That's an example. Another one is Linux. But you guys are now probably confusing, but I thought you said Google owns Android, right? So why? Yes, Google owns it, but this is what happens. This is the difference between Android and Apple or Microsoft. The code, the back end code, the program, Google gives it to everybody. Say, you know what? You can, this is how we created it. You can customize this to fit your environment. If you know what you're doing, you can take an Android code and customize it to fit how you want to use it. That's what makes it an open source. It doesn't mean they don't own it. They own it, but they say, here's the back end code. You can change it. This is why when Google purchased Android, they had a choice. Should we make it close, close code and let us just keep it? Or should we make it open? They decided to go open. The reason why developers, people that are building your applications, once they get that back end code, they can customize the application to work better with Android. Where in Apple or Microsoft, they control it. You cannot do that much. This is why Google Android is the most popular phone application in the world because, because they made it open source. They said, here's our back code, use it. Google says, we're going to make more money from the back end. Let everybody put it on the computer, on their on the mobile phones. This is why Android is the most popular platform for phones. Same thing happened with Microsoft. Microsoft did closed source, but Microsoft said they made their program. They went to all the phone, the computer developers say, hey, we're going to charge you cheaper if you use our operating system. But still, they, the, the difference is Microsoft controls everything about their software. 
If Dell wants to install Microsoft on their computer, they have to pay Microsoft. But Android, you don't have to pay for it. It's free. It's open source. You can customize it and do whatever you want with it. So this is a major difference. So whenever you're talking about computers, know about the difference between closed source and open source. Open source means the code can be fixed and customized for anybody to use. Closed source means it cannot. Now I have a question for the class. I've been talking a lot. Now let me get you guys thinking a bit. What is the good thing? Who can tell me some of the good thing about closed source? What are the, some good things about closed source? Who can tell me some of the good thing about a closed source environment where Microsoft said we control our code, we, you can only use it for this, but um, you know, but who, who, who wants to volunteer to tell me some of the good things about? I no, think I it's more secure. Okay, somebody say it's more secure. Hmm. And see. also attack by virus will be minimal. So somebody says, okay, so let me write this down because people are making points here. Uh, so somebody says, uh, closed source. It's more secure. Security. No marketing competition. Uh, somebody said, wait, wait, what was the second one? Uh, security says, uh, uh, somebody says something after security. What was the first? What was the it was one? about viruses. Viruses. Yeah. That's kind of go with security, you know, viruses, yeah. okay? So what else? Um, it's also commercial. It's for profits, okay. Low competition. Somebody say low competition. Okay. All right, I don't know. Okay, what about open source? What are some of the good things about open source? So now is where you got you gotta right now is where I'm making you guys think yeah. like easy critically. access, easy, easy access. access. So somebody says easy access and fast access. Somebody says fast. And, and also you can get a lot of apps or down okay. or things from it. More apps. It's more universal. More universal. A lot of income. <laughs> income? Uh, income, are you sure? Well, it, okay. yeah, like it's I, open for everyone. It's open for, okay, that way it's open for everyone. Okay. Progress. Progress. Yeah, someone says free, Mo. That was the one I was looking for. Free, F-R-E-E. -E. Microsoft, you have to pay for Microsoft, right? Uh, uh, um, iOS, you have to pay for this, but in Android, open source, it's free. The code is available. Okay, so I've heard some things here, and I disagree with some of them, but I wanted you guys to first kind of launch out your ideas. It's more accessible, yeah. Somebody says that more appeals, more uh, access. Yeah, fast access. Yeah, so there's some truth, and then there's some things that I'm going to contest. Again, let us let me now go to what I think are some of the... Uh... Okay, so close. Vulnerable. Vulnerable for which one? Open source. It's more vulnerable. For antivirus. Okay. Possibility. Possibility. Okay. Okay. Well, let me let me clear up some things for you guys, right? So number one, closed source. The good things about closed source. Mm -hmm. You guys said it. It's free. <laughs> number two. You have the backend code, so you can customize it to, for whatever you're trying to do. If you're trying to build an application, you can customize it. Since you have the code, you can customize it. Um, sorry. Oh, I said open. 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 I said, oh, yeah. So I said That's close, but I mean open. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, you see, hey, I, I was trying to see if you guys were paying attention. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, now that I know you guys are paying attention. So open is what I mean. We are. Okay. Okay. So open, number one, it's free. Number two, it's customizable. You can customize it to fit what you're trying to build. Right? You, you can make it, if you know what you're doing, obviously, you can customize it to fit your environment. Number three, 
you have a whole community, the whole world are working on it. People who are developers, you have a lot of people who are working on it. So community involvement. So if the community is involved, more people are looking into it. I think it's gonna be a little more secure because why? Somebody can see a problem there like, you know, that other people may not see. Now, if you flip this on the closed side, the closed side have to hire their own developers, right? Mm -hmm. And for you hiring every developer, you have to pay them, right? Mm -hmm. so your resources, the amount of money you can give with developers is limited. So maybe Microsoft can have like 10 or 20 people who are working on their yes. Microsoft yes. Windows program. Yes. Please mute yourself, right? Some people that are working on a Microsoft program. If those, de so the, the, the defense, how well they can secure it can only possibly be dependable on those people. But in open source, you have an entire community of people around the world who are looking at it, who can be like, hey, there's a vulnerability here, we need to fix that. So just because it's open source doesn't mean, uh, you know, you have, you have a body, you have like a group of organizations that are actually looking after it. And, and, and these people, uh, but since the whole community is looking at it, I think it's a little more secure because people can see vulnerabilities to it. Now, with all of these there are exceptions to it, but for the most part, open source, because of that community involvement, people can catch things that maybe the developers may not catch and they can catch it quicker. It's because it's open to the world, but there may be a problem with Microsoft, which is closed or Apple, which we may not know about, they may not know about, but a hacker may figure it out. Just because you're saying, don't, you don't, you're not allowed to go in our system, doesn't mean that a hacker is not gonna go in the back end and try to figure out how to come and, 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 and attack your computer. So these are some of the good things about uh, uh, open source, free, you can customize it, and you have a whole community involvement. Now, that's the good. Let me now go to some of the headaches about, happen, about happen, having open source. So, bad for open source. Number one, if this thing start, you install it in your, in, your, in your environment and something goes wrong with it or there's a problem, who can help you? <laughs> Hmm. No. Community can help you, but uh, let's say your business, you in install one of the open systems, right? And all of a sudden, something happened. It's not working. And you need your website to be up because it's costing you money. Who's going to help you? Now you got to find, calling this Joe, finding out somebody who can help you. But if you have Microsoft and it is a problem, who do you call? You know exactly, hey, hey, look, this is so the help, the support. The, the closed source, you can get more strategic um, support. The open source, it may be a little more difficult. That's one of the things, right? Who else? Uh, think about other, the other problems you may have with open source. Well, the virus is not really because the community can, that's the security part. The community can actually see some things and say, you know what? But I get, I get where you, you're coming from, but not quite. It's... Yeah, but that's a good thing for you. I'm talking about for you, the user, the person who installs it. What are some of the, the, the stuff that, that the, some of the other bad stuff for the community? Easy access. Easy access is a good thing. It's I'm talking for you. You, you, you know, that's a good thing about it. So you're the user, you don't want to install it. What are some of the bad things? So we talked about one is getting help support. Um. Yeah. Also, the, the, the thing is, it's variation. There's so many flavors, so many different things. Sometimes it's hard. You got to learn it. You know, going through and learning it. Maybe this one part, this one is built this way. The other one may be a little different. So some people type, someone type something. Let me see what it is. So flexibility, marketability. Yeah. But again, for me, those are some of the things, the flexibility, the, 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 the fact that you have to sometimes adjust to learn it. Um, yeah, but those are some of the things, okay? So let's switch over now to open, to the closed source. 
what are the good about the closed source? I've kind of talked about some of them. Support. Okay. What's another one? Secure. Mm -hmm. Are you guys sure it's secure? I just said sometimes, well, it, that can be debatable, but for me, sometimes it, it, it can be more secure. But again, one thing about hackers, one thing about hackers is hackers are they will get, even, even when you said you cannot see the code, they will find a way to see that backend code. That's what hackers do. They will figure out, you know, you, you accept saying, I'm not going to mess with the code. I'm not going to touch and tinker with this. But hackers are always in the back trying to figure out how they can come in. So here's how hackers work. And we'll have a session where one of our cybersecurity guys will give you more about hackers and to help better help you before the session ends. Um, in the next, uh, before this two-week session ends, you have a session on that. So here's what hackers do. This, let's say this is your operating system. And your operating system is being secured by this round circle, right? All a hacker needs to do is find a, a hole somewhere to come in. That's all they need. In this round ring, they're going to look around, look around to find like a vulnerability. And that's all they need. They're going to come right in and do what they want to do. That's how cybersecurity works. So in, in the open source, they may know more open source, since a lot of people are using it, they're more likely to maybe figure out what the vulnerabilities are than you just hire a bunch of experts. I'm not saying it's not secured, but it is secure. Now, there's a debate. I'm an Apple user. There's always a debate saying like, Apple is more secure than Windows. That is not 100% true. Thieves like what? Thieves like reward for their work, right? Thieves like reward for their work. So if you have um, Apple and you have Windows, what's per, what percentage of the computers out there uh, have Windows? About 90%, right? Let's say 90%. Apple, maybe three or so percent, right? If I'm a thief and I'm trying to steal, I'm trying to do bad, which one gives me more reward? 90% because these are the way people are. If I'm trying to steal, I want to make sure it's worth my, my, my effort. So this is why Windows tend to get hacked more because the rewards are bigger there. Where Mac are not as much. Now, I'm not saying they don't have protocols in place, but this is one of the reasons why Macs don't get attacked as much. The reward is less. There are not too many people that are using it. But in Windows, the most of the population use it. This is why Windows people go after Windows computers, OK? No system is 100% secure. If anybody tells you that, they don't know what they're talking about. Now, just like your house, if you have an alarm system, if a thief really wants to get in, they will get in. But why do you put an alarm system? You put it there to deter them. If you are here and your neighbor is here, you have an alarm system. You say, I have an alarm system here, and the thief sees it, and your neighbor doesn't, right? The thief is going to... Thieves like least resistant. They rather come break into this house that doesn't have it than this house that has it. That's why even in your house, when you have like ADT, they, they'll put a sign saying this house is being protected by ADT. So the thief knows this house has something. It's a deterrent. If they know it, they're like, man, that's more work. They're going to find a house that don't have it to go steal. Make sense? So a motivated thief will always get in if they're motivated enough. The thing is, you want to put system in place to make it very unattractive for them to come and try to break into it. Give them more work. This is why you lock your door. This is why you have an alarm. This is why maybe you get a dog. <laughs> These are all deterrent. But if somebody is determined enough to steal, to come break in your house, they will do that. Okay? So let's get that understanding there between that. So are we good with open source and closed source? Everyone understands it, right? So open source has its good, it has its bad. Closed source is profitable. It's more organized. Uh, it's, you have support, which some people just need. And um, so these are some of the differences. OK, uh, let's continue. Share. OK, so that's closed source and open source. So again, Android, I've talked about. 
is open source. Android and Linux is open source. Windows, Apple is a closed source. So you should know now what they mean by closed source and open source. So Windows operating system is the one that acts as a translator between you and your computer, right? It allows you to communicate with the computer since you don't know how to take, speak the language. It uses what's called a graphical user interface, G, uh, GUI. This word GUI. Why is it a graphical? What's a graphical? Graphic is a picture, right? It's easy to use. You just click on a picture, Facebook opens. You just pick on, click on something, it opens. But the operating system in the back end is actually speaking a language. You just click, but it goes in. This is why Windows and Apple, and they're so popular and Android, because all you, you, don't, you don't have to speak computer language. You just click on a picture, it does it for you. So they use what's called a GUI interface, GUI, graphical user interface. Without an operating system, your computer is basically useless. So we talked about this. Windows and Android are operating systems that know how to communicate with the component inside of your computer and they allow you to talk. It will allow you to communicate with the computer without knowing how to speak a computer language, which is zeros and one. So I'm just kind of repeating again what we just went through that, that screenshot. And graphical user interface means you hear the word GUI, 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 GUI. A GUI is a graphical user interface. You hear this a lot in the IT world. Without operating system, again, useless. Now, once you install an operating system, all you have, your computer is still not ready to be used. So now we use the applications. Once we start installing an application, now our computers become useful. Our laptop become useful because we can now start doing things with them. So you hear the word apps, 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 apps. For those of you that don't know, apps is short for application. So when you say, well, hey, let me download this app. Apps are just that, it's short for application. An application allows you to do one or more tasks. On your computer, the most simple application is what? The date, the time, because they tell you one basic thing, right? They will give you a date and time, that's your job. But that's an application, it does a function. You have a more comple complex application, such as Microsoft Word, where you can type, you can edit, you can do that. A web browser allows you to do what? To go to the internet, World Wide Web, that's its job. So all this application, what an application does is, it allows you to do one or more specific tasks. So once you start installing an application, your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever now start becoming useful. But the application has to be built for what? For a particular what? A specific a application has to be built for a particular what? Operating system. For, per, per, for a particular operating system. Oh, okay. Right? So think about it. Those of you that have Android, your WhatsApp, does it look the same, exactly the same as the WhatsApp that's built for uh, Apple? No. No. Because, exactly. So they're built slightly different. The application has to be built for a particular operating system because what? The operating system is the one that translates with the computer. So you first have to install the operating system and on top of the operating system you build the application. That's why you have to decide, are you a Mac person or are you a Windows person? Are you a Google person, a uh, Android, Google Android, or are you a iOS, Microsoft, or, 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 or Apple? So you, you have to decide this thing because they all look, the applications, they may do the same similar function, but they don't look exactly the same because you have to build it for that particular translator, which is operating system. Okay, so applications for desktop computers come, wireless come for mobile devices. They're slightly different, but they're all, just remember that. Application does one or more specific task. Application must be installed for a particular operating system. 
And the operating system is who talks directly with the hardware. So you have to follow it. The hardware gets built, but I cannot use it. I have to install the software, operating system software. Once the operating system software is installed, now I have to start installing or downloading, whatever you want to call it, the applications that I'm going to use. And apps is short for application. And what is the definition of application? It's a program that does one or task, one or more. Some of them do only one thing. Calendar shows you calendar. The calendar shows you a calendar. There's a calculator app that does calculation. And then you have the more um, robust, the more complex application that do several things like Microsoft Word. You can type, you can write, you can do all of these things with it. Make sense? So again, we're just gonna go through some of the applications. Some are more featured like Microsoft Word. Others do one or more things. A few things like clock or calendar. And uh, Microsoft Word processor does some of these things. It's more complex. These are more of the complex one, the Microsoft Word, where you can type, you have spell check, you can do. These are more complex application, but they're all applications. You have some of the other applications, the web browsers for you to go to the internet, right? That's all a web browser does. It's only job is you click on it, it has Safari, Google. Now, in the application side, who can tell me what browser comes with Microsoft? Which one is owned by Microsoft? Nope, you already said who owns it. Microsoft, who, Google Chrome is Google, it's owned by Google Chrome. Internet right? Explorer. Internet Explorer. Internet. I hate it. I think it's crappy, but that's my own personal opinion. But Internet Explorer comes with Microsoft. So as soon as you install Microsoft operating system, it automatically comes with that application, Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer, is that open source or closed source? I'm asking now. You guys know now what open source and closed source is. So are you sure? Who, who owns it? It's Microsoft. So again, you see how I'm, yeah, it's closed source. Now, uh, Google owns Chrome, but that's not open source though. It's owned by them, right? But you can install it on Android. Now, you know which one is open source? Firefox. Firefox, yeah. Firefox is open source. And Firefox, for me, is even better, more secure than Internet Explorer. Firefox is open source. The code is open for anybody. That's why, uh, so you see, you start thinking that even on the application side, you have open source application, you have, um, yeah, you can use it anywhere. So that is, so you guys are starting to see, even on the op opening side, there's some uh, open source. And also on the application side, there's some closed source and open source. So Internet Explorer is owned by Microsoft. Um, Safari is owned by who? iOS. It's theirs. Uh, uh, you know, so this is why when you install the operating system, sometimes they, by default, they already come with some applications you can use as soon as you, as when you download and install the operating systems. So know, start knowing those differences, what they are, and then start knowing what's open source, what's closed source, and start thinking about these things. If something goes wrong, can I get help? <laughs> or do I have to go into the community? Which one seems to be a little more secure? The open source one are pretty nice because people are, the community is always checking them. So me personally, I rather use, I like Chrome and Firefox and they have other stuff, other uh, open source um, applications out that you can use. And guess what the good thing about them? Free, open source are free. A lot of them are free stuff, okay? Chrome is owned, yeah, Chrome is owned by uh, Google, Google Chrome, but it's compatible with Android, Google, owns it, but it can work on an Android, which is open source, by the way. The Android open sy operating system is open source, which means you can build an application that works on it. We can all build applications that work on it, no problem, right? And we don't pay for it, it's free. So again, Internet Explorer is Microsoft, Mozilla, Firefox is open source, Google Chrome is owned by Google, Safari is owned by Apple iOS. And here's a good thing. Those of you that have Google Chrome, you don't have Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Word. You don't have Microsoft Word. But guess what? You can use Google Docs to write your papers 
and it's compatible. If somebody sends you a Microsoft document, you can actually open it in Chrome and you work fine. If you want to do, present, I mean, Google Docs, if you want to do presentations, you have Google Slides. If you can, you can do that. So uh, if you want to do, uh, 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 you want to do your email, you can do Gmail. Uh, Microsoft owns what? What email service does Microsoft own? Hotmail. Hotmail is owned by Microsoft. So hotmail.com is owned by that. Google owns Gmail. Uh, and then for a spreadsheet, you can use it. So these are some of the web applications you can use. And the good thing is once you have a, a Gmail account, what, you can store all of this in the cloud, which means you don't have to store it in your computer. Every time you have access, you can log in there and see all of them. Yahoo is owned by Yahoo. Yahoo's, uh, that's another private company that owns Yahoo. So again, some companies just do particular things, but the bigger boys, Microsoft, Google, Apple, these guys, they have a wide reach in IT world, things that they do. Um, so, um, and Skype, Skype is owned by Microsoft. It used to, so what's that, what happens sometimes in IT? You have a company, Skype was a private company, and then Microsoft saw that, hey, we're losing the war, the war on the, in, the, the internet. So they bought that company called Skype. So now Skype is owned, just like Facebook. Facebook owns WhatsApp. WhatsApp was a separate company. Facebook bought WhatsApp. So as companies get money, they want to grow, they'll buy smaller companies. So sometimes you can get in IT and then you build a company, you build an application. One of the things you want is the big boys to come buy you. When they buy you, you now own shares in that company. And then you, as they grow, your money grows. So these are some of the things why IT companies are coming up. YouTube used to be a separate company. A couple of guys started it and Google bought it. So these companies, these big companies will buy smaller companies. You understand? They'll buy smaller companies. So you start something, they'll buy it. Just like now Facebook owns Instagram. Facebook owns WhatsApp. They, you know, so they, as they grow, they become in these big companies, but you may not know it, okay? So, just a picture of Firefox, some of the browsers we've talked about. And then to shut down your computer, you don't wanna just go and push that off button. <laughs> Go to the power and hit shut down. So what happens when you hit shut down? When you push the power button to shut your computer down, it's like your computer crash. You don't want that. What you want to do, you go shut down. When you go shut down, your computer is going to turn off in steps. It's going to first do what? It's going to take everything that's in memory. It's going to flush it down to hard drive. Then it shuts down the memory. It shuts down the processor. It shuts down the hard drive. It shuts down everything that's running systematically. Then it goes off. That's how you shut down your computer. Just don't push the power button. Only push the power button when you push and shut down and it's stuck. And then you can push the power button, what's called a crash. So these are some of the things you wanna do. Okay, and that's basically the presentation for today. Now, the next session is gonna be, we're gonna learn some command lines. We're gonna learn more about how um, um, some of these uh, stuff work. But before we do that, I wanna do a demo of the Microsoft operating system. Uh, just show people around some of it. And then I'm also gonna do a demo of the, some of the stuff that come with Google, the products that Google offers and how you can use it. Because I want by the end of the day, those of you that are new to, the, to it, those of you that have Chromebooks, those of you that have Microsoft Windows, you have some tricks, some things you can learn, uh, some basic things you can play around with. So we'll do that for about 20, 30 minutes, and then I'll leave it to question and answer, and we wrap up at two o'clock. Um, the next session, which will be Monday evening from seven to nine, we're gonna be doing more of the advanced stuff because this is the basics. So I need everyone after this to go back, watch the video, study, get comfortable with all of these things. Then we're gonna step up now. The next class, we're gonna be doing more stuff that's gonna be more advanced. And we're gonna build, every day we're gonna build for the next two weeks, we're gonna build. So by the time we're done, you're gonna know about computers, you're going to know how to type commands, you're going to know Linux, you're going to know about how computers, the, the internet, how things work in the internet. So by the time we're done, you're going to have a good idea of how computers communicate and the different operating system uh, to move on. Make sense? But I want you guys to first get the basics. So the thing is, you learn, you practice for the next few days, we come back, 
you learn, a day or so you practice, and then you build. Just don't go home and sit down. So you have two assignments. The one thing to set your goals, and then also I'm going to put a quiz. So by the end of the day today, I'm going to put a quiz. It's going to be a multiple choice quiz. And then that just to kind of test you to make sure you understand what you know. And you can take it several times. And I will see exactly the score and see how people are scoring. If you don't take it, I will know. If you take it, I will know. But again, I'm not threatening you guys, but I want you guys to take the quiz so you guys learn exactly and make sure that you are observing this stuff. And it's it's going to be in a portal. The same portal where you log in is going to be there. And I'm going to add some other videos that can that you can learn from other things that will help you guys. So as long as in this next couple of weeks, you're willing to like spend time learning, you will learn the stuff, okay? So we're gonna take a five minute break so everybody can just decompress and then I will, uh, uh, I'll do a quick demo and then we'll go from there. So let's, uh, let's do our five minutes. So, uh, yeah, so I want to just kind of, this is a demo part. So this is a Windows 10 computer, right? So a lot of times, um, there's some basic things you want to do. The, the good thing about Windows 10 is uh, it comes with, um, it comes with um, its own virus protection, right? It comes with its own virus protection. So there's some things you should be doing. Every week or so, you want to just check for updates. Once you have internet, go and check for updates because this is what happens. Hackers are always trying to find, remember I told you that circle. They just need a little hole to get in. So they will keep looking for vulnerability, for vulnerabilities, and they can get in. And like I said, if a hacker is motivated enough and know what they're doing, I don't care. They will figure out a way to get in. So the only thing is make it so hard for them that you determine like saying, you know, it's not worth the effort. So um, the first thing you want to do when you get your computer, you want to come, you see this, this is a search bar right here. If you have Windows 10, there's a cool assistant there that's called Conterra. So, so, so Conterra kind of helps you. Can you hear what Conterra is saying? Yes, this is Mohammed Fofana. No. What can you do? What can you do? So this guy takes a bit to set up, but once you set it up, it, it's like your own CV. You know, if you have like a, you can ask question, what is the weather in Maryland? So you see, you can ask questions. This is Quantel. You just gotta, if you have a mic on your, on your laptop, you can set it up where as long as you have internet connection, you can ask questions here that we can give you. And you can be like, Who's the president of the United States? What is five times five? So you see that as long as you have internet connection, Contera is one assistant that can give you quick facts by just asking, clicking on it and then asking questions. So that's, that's it, that's the little icon. And you can say it, you can say, open Microsoft Word. So it's actually, I just gave it a command to open my application. So if you have Windows 10, this is a free feature that comes with it where it would, it would, it, it, it can give it commands and it would do it for you, okay? So that's Contana, Contana, whatever, Contana, I think that's the name. So it's a, again, for you to use it, I think as you have internet connection, it would do it for internet related questions, but for like opening applications and then you can talk to it, it would do that. Another thing you want to do is this search bar. 
Here, you want to do this. You want to type um, for your computer to be secured. You want to do some things. So what you're going to do is you're going to type um, Defender. So Defender is the virus protection tool that comes with your computer. Okay, this is a free virus protection tool and you wanna make sure your computer, your Defender is, is on. So from Windows 10, Windows started giving you this free Defender. And what you do, you just come in, you see here, network privacy, uh, you know, and then guest network. So it's, you want this to be turned on. So what you do, once you come, again, you're gonna type Defender and then you see there, window defender. It's a firewall. A firewall, they call this a firewall. Why do they call it a firewall? It's, you know, when you build houses that are next to each other, like townhouses, they put a firewall in between this house and the other house. So if your house catch on fire, <laughs> the fire doesn't jump over to mine. So a firewall like protects you from people outside on the internet to come in to do bad things. So what you want to do is make sure your firewall is turned on. So you want to come in and say, uh, um, turn, if it's off, just say turn Windows Defender on. You see right now mine is on. If I want, I can just click here and turn it off. But that's a good habit. Make sure that this application is on. It helps you protect your system. Now, there are new attacks that are coming up every day. So what you want to do, you want to make sure that you are updating your computer regularly. So for you to check if your computer is being updated with the latest virus protection that are out there, you want to come here again and just type update. You see that when you type update, the thing will say check for update. Just click here on the check for update. And this will tell you all the updates that are possibly available. You see, mine has done an update. It did a cumulative update for Windows 10. And usually this is security. Microsoft will push this Every time they figure out there's a problem, they will, sh they will sh push software that will help protect you more because every day more viruses are coming out there, right? And what you do is if you just do update, it would, right now mine has done the update. So what I need to do is see, I just need to restart my computer and then this new update that's been downloaded will work. So once in a while, you just wanna come and do updates and check and see what kind of updates are available. If you don't see anything here, just say Windows update, just click here and it would run. I'm not gonna restart now because I'm doing a session, but later I'm gonna restart the computer so the software can get installed and implemented. So that's something you wanna do for your protection, okay? So again, everything here is on the command. You can type what you wanna see here. So that's the quick shortcut. Now, over here, you see some things. This tells you the battery life of your computer. Right now, my computer is plugged in. Here tells you the volume level. I can put the volume up or down from here. And here means I'm connected, what network I'm connected to. Right now I'm connected to a wireless network. That's here, okay? Um, someone asking a question. Now, if you have another software program, don't like McAfee, somebody saying they have like a McAfee other software program, leave it on. That, that can be your main one. You don't want too many different viruses installed on your computer, virus protection, right? So what happens is it's like you having two snakes that are supposed to be two dogs or whatever, they're supposed to be protecting you. Now, if you put two of them in the same place, they may start fighting each other. So if you have one virus protection, don't go install like three more others. Just stick with the one you have. But, but for now, you don't need to go spend a lot of money to buy um, outside virus protection stuff. Window Defender has been doing a very good job. I used to not like it, but now it's very, very good. And like I said, they will send you new updates of new viruses that are coming out there. Okay? Yeah. So, but again, there are several, just pick which one you want, but then this comes with the box. You don't need to do much. So for your programs, this is what it looks like. The programs that you use will be here. Everything you install will be here. It's in alphabetical order. Everything you install will be here. So these are all the programs that you have, right? But sometimes there are particular programs that you use the most. So me, I use uh, Google Chrome a lot. So one thing you can do is the applications you use the most, you can actually pin them 
here on the taskbar, right? And what I mean by pin them, you don't have to look far for them. So like Google, if I right click, there's a, in your mouse, you have a right click and a, and a left click. If you right click on the application that's open, if you just say pin to taskbar, it's gonna pin it here. So even when I close it, even when I close it, it's still showing there. So if I wanna open it again, I don't have to come here and search for it. I'll just click here and it opens. And if you don't want it to be pinned, just right click and say unpin. And once you've unpinned it, see, it's no longer there. But when I wanna pin a, a, a program, I just open the program and it will show down here. Down here shows you all the programs that are open. You see here, this is called a task bar because it's telling you the tasks that are currently open where? Where does this thing get open? In the RAM. It gets open in the RAM. So in the task bar, once it's open like this again, I can just right click on it and pin it. Okay? So this is This is the, uh, so, so yeah, so this is the, the taskbar, okay? So you can do that to just move on. So you see here, I have like Chrome, I have Firefox. I don't use Internet Explorer much, but these are the two that I use the most, okay? And obviously I have my WhatsApp application, my Zoom application, and some of the other stuff that I use the most, right? Now, for the browsing, the internet browsing, the one thing you wanna be careful of is just don't click on everything. Just don't click on everything. Be careful what sites you go to. Some sites, they do phishing. I mean, we'll talk more about this when we do the cybersecurity side, but uh, just giving you some heads up as far as what, what you do, okay? So you can browse around here and go through and, and, and do what you need to do. Now, if you guys have a Gmail, you have a Gmail account, you can use Chrome to do a lot of things. So if you go to uh, uh, google.com, this is a quick browser where you go there and you see this Google page, right? You see this tab here, this little pin that shows you here? If you click on it, it opens all the stuff, the software that's owned by Google that you can use. See all of these? These are the same things that are in your Chromebook. So, if, so for those of you that have Chromebook, if you wanna enjoy your Chromebook, make sure you get a Gmail account. And once you log in, all of these things are gonna be available to you. Now let's say I wanna, uh, type a paper. All I need to do is come here and open Google Docs. And all of this is being done, I have to be connected to the internet. So as long as you have internet, and when you log in, you see it's gonna give you some sample stuff. This is how it looks like when you log in the first time. If, you see here, if you wanna be your resume, it gives you a sample resume you can use and then just put your information in, it can help you with that. So they have like, these are called templates. Basic things you can use to create things that you want. But if you just want a blank piece of paper to write, just open this plus sign and it's gonna give you this blank piece of paper, just like Microsoft Word. And this is free, you don't have to go pay for it. So now I'm gonna just type, this is, oops, I can type today, is my first paper. Yeah, I, I, so, so you see how this is like that, right? You type in, and then once you type it, you wanna name it, you wanna give it a name, just come up here, see where it says Untitled? You can just name it what you want here, and then I, you can give it a name. My first paper. And that's it, it's been saved. So I'm writing now, writing now, I can write. If I want, I can stop and come back later, it's gonna save it in the Google Cloud. Okay, so now, 
let's say you want to download it. So you, 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 you want to bring it down to your computer. Just go to files and say download. When you download, you see, it's, it's going to ask you, do you want to download it as Microsoft Word? You want to download it as a PDF? It gives you a different option of how you can download it. And then if I just download a Microsoft Word, you see how the paper is being downloaded now? It's now downloaded on my computer, right? So this is one cool. Absolutely. So good question. If you don't have Microsoft Word on your computer, right? You can download it as PDF. But okay, let's say somebody who has a, who worked on Microsoft program sends you something and you need to work on it, right? But you don't have Microsoft, you have Google Chrome. You can upload it to Google Chrome and work on it. So how do you do that? Let me look, let me show you. If you open Google Docs, you just come here, file, you go to open. You see, it's gonna give you some option. It's you see the, the paper that we just did, my first paper, it's saved there. So I can, if I want to continue working on it, I'll just click on this, I'll start. But if somebody sends you something that you downloaded, just go to upload. Remember, when you need to pull something to the cloud, it's called an upload. You need to upload it there. When you bring something from the cloud to your computer, you're downloading. So what you want now, if somebody sent you a document that you have here, you got to upload it to the Google page. So all you do, go to upload here, and then you click here to find it. And you just check on your computer where the file is. You see, so if I open my monthly, you see, uh, I can pick now the file that I want to upload. Let me find like a, a document file that's easy. So let me do this uh, e-letter, right? So you see how it's uploading the e-letter? Now it's opening on my Google Docs. And from here, See, I can write, make changes, and then guess what? It can save here. So not only can you use this computer, but anytime you, anytime you go somebody else's computer anywhere, as long as they have internet, just go into internet, log into your Gmail account, and then you can work there when you don't just sign out. So this is Google Docs. The other thing about Google Docs is it has another one called, so this is for typing paper. Let's say you want to do a presentation like the one I was just doing, right? That I did a... PowerPoint presentation, it gives you that ability. So if you come, again, if you just go, I'm gonna, sh I'm showing you here step by step. If you click here again, it has, if you slide down, Google Slides. This help, allows you to make presentation, slide presentation, like the one I just used to do my, my class. You can build it. And they always give you a template, something you can start with. These are all the slides that I, you see, my, my, the class I have to teach, these are all the slides that I, I keep them there. So even if I'm, I, I lose my flash drive, I go anywhere, as long as I have a computer internet, I can access all my slides. I can download them. I can, you know, I can do all of that. So these are the Google Slides. You can just Create, if you want a new slide, just go to new slide. And you can present, create your slide, insert pictures, everything that you do here. Okay? And then it will either give you like template of how you want the slides to look. They'll give you like sample. So you just right click, uh, new slide, and then you can just create your slide as you want. And then when you're ready, just name it here what you want to name it. You can do, yeah, you can do a complimentary card. Yeah, you can do stuff like that. They have other designing tools, but this is more, this is more like for presentation. Yeah, so if you're given a presentation, you can use it with Google Slide. Now, if you want to do, let's say you, you want to do Excel, you want to do some math, right? Just go to new, see here, spreadsheet, Google Spreadsheet. This one will allow you to, like Excel. And a cool thing that they have here is, um, you can, so you can open it from, from, you see I have slide here open, and the next tab I have, so you can have several things open and work on them at the same time. Okay, so Google Slide is there. So if I wanna, again, from, from the, the, the Google page, if you come here, 
all of these things are there. You can even go to the App Store. For those that have Chromebook, you can go to the App Store just like you do on your Android phone and go there and download and go and download the any other application that you want. So it has the Google Play Store here, okay? And, uh, and then they have some Google Books. So some of you that want to read books that are free books that are online, you can click here and you can do and get books, okay? And so these are just some of the few things. I'll say play around with it. They have a lot of stuff that they offer, uh, but you can, you can get a lot of, 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 of things from the Google Slide and the Google Doc stuff, okay? So that's just a snippet of stuff we're going to learn. Uh, we're going to, uh, um, of, of, now, I just want you guys being comfortable with this because the next class, we're going to learn some commands. So there's a thing there called command prompt where we're going to be practicing command prompt. So you see here, everything I can just click and click here and open, all the things I can just click here. I'm we're actually going to learn to do it. If these pictures are not here, how we can talk to the computer, we can just type commands here and it will show us what are here. So right now, See here, it show me. It show me here, all the things that are, my music, picture, all my folders. It show me some of the folders, desktop. I'm seeing this, and but here because of us, we don't know much about computer. We see it like this. See this desktop, these folders is. See this is graphical. Remember GUI, GUI. We seen the pictures, but and the but you don't have to see the picture. You can actually use this command, this black and white command. You can see the same thing, desktop, document, download. I'm in the same folders as here, desktop, download, document. I'm in the same folders, but here I'm accessing it by giving commands. So the next session, we're gonna learn some of the other things, how you can like type commands for your computer to do things. But first, I need everyone to kind of be comfortable working with this, knowing where things are in the computers. Okay, now I think I'm gonna leave it up for the next few minutes for question and answers. Before I do that, the, everything is gonna be installed. Um, uh, give me, by the end of the day, I'm gonna upload this video to the portal. But for those of you that are not oh, sure, I'm gonna show you exactly how to access them. So you're gonna go to training. training.com. And this is the free class. You're gonna click on it. And whatever username and password you used before, you're gonna you're gonna log in. Now, for those of you that don't have an account, you're gonna say create new account in the bottom there. So you can see here when you come here, this we'll keep using this. You can you can actually start whenever we start the meeting, the sessions. If you just click here on this link it will allow you to join the session. So you just click on this link. So I'll keep this link here all the time. Now we've covered number one. These are all the things we're supposed to do. There's a video here that tells you how to use Google Docs that I recorded earlier. So if you just click on it, it will play this video that will tell you how to use Google Docs more than what I just explained. For those of you that have Chromebooks, Okay, now, it will also, so that's number one. Number two is what we did today, the presentation on your goal setting. So just go through, you will see one, two, three, just click on each. It's gonna show you some things you can work on. So this is a slide of the presentation I did. You can literally go watch it forward. You can just keep moving forward like this to read the slides. You can also make it bigger by pushing here. And it has this little pointer if you really wanna like, you know, make it cool and then just go next, next, exact slide that we went through, okay? So the slide is there and below it is your goal setting. I have to upload two more files here. So give me about 20 minutes after class. Let me add the other stuff. And you're gonna download this stuff. These are the stuff you're gonna download to set your goals. The assignment I gave you guys to think about five years from now and then set the goals. And it's, gonna also, it's also gonna have a calendar, a 66 day calendar. 
They said it takes 66 days for you to learn to get a habit. So whatever habit you're going to work on, put it on the wall. And every day you do what you're supposed to do, just check it. After 66 days, you should be like good to, that habit should have already been built. Okay, I'm going to add a calendar for you. And this is the video that I showed you that was choppy a little bit. If you go click on it, you can watch that video on your home. And here are some slides about that video. So once you're done here, that's number two. That's what we did earlier, the first part of class. Number three is what we just did, the second, the second part of class, right? And I gave you here the main points of what you're supposed to take away from today's session. The various form of computer laptops, the key parts of a computer, the hardware, the operating system. So these are the key points you were supposed to learn today. So go through and review these key points, right? And the slides I just went through, they're right here, the same thing. You have access to them. And here is a video also of what I did of the computer or what a computer is. So you can see them for yourself. Okay? So you see the computer here. You can go through and watch this again. It will show you exactly uh, the different computers. Okay? So again, learn keep the all the tools are here it's up to you how much time you want to put in and what i'm going to do today's session today's video i'm also going to add it here so give me by the end of the day patient with me by the end of the day this session i'm recording now i'm going to put up there so you guys can go back and watch so the resources i'm going to give you it's just a matter of you taking the time <laughs> to watch and go through it if you spend one or two hours a day practicing you're going to be you're gonna be very, very comfortable by the end of this class with what we're doing here. So I'm giving you as much as I can for you guys to learn and, and grow. So I will add some more videos, but everything you need will be here. All you gotta do, log in and just watch, take notes. But remember, uh, I'm also gonna, by tomorrow, latest by tomorrow, I have a question. I have a, a multiple choice question about to kind of test you guys what you know. But I'm gonna allow you guys to consume the information today and then by tomorrow i'll post the quiz and you guys i will know who took the quiz who, who, who don't but again it's for your own good for you to test your knowledge of what you're learning okay any questions so as the class moves on we're going to keep having more these slides are going to grow by in the next two weeks each session is going to keep growing okay so i've done enough talking for today any questions online the mic is open for question and answer for the next 15 or so minutes. Yeah, so the website we're working on, uh, our developer is working on, on I know it's not showing secure today because we've been doing some changes to add this and I'm out of time, but uh, don't worry, it'll be, it'll be secure in the next few days. We are working on it, we are aware. Uh, we are making some adjustments to the portal, that's why, but no worry, I'm not, we don't have any credit card information, date of birth or anything like that. So uh, it's just your name and your email, but we are working on, on, on we'll get it secure. Um, that's one of the things we, 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 we do have. So somebody's paying attention, that is good. You always wanna make sure you pay attention to sites that are secure. If a site is not secure, do not put your credit card information there. Do not put your personal information there because a hacker can come in there and see everything that's going on between you and them. We'll talk more about security when we do networking, but for now, that's a good catch, but we are working on it. I am aware of that. Steve, Any other questions? Um, so from today, does that mean the classes are Mondays and Wednesdays? Yeah, so, um, for the, for, so this is a two week free session that everybody is free to attend before we break out to our regular cybersecurity, our AWS and the other classes that we teach. Um, but yeah, so for now, everyone should be joining Saturdays from 10 to 2, Mondays from 9 p.m. to, I mean, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., apologies, and then Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the next two weeks, we'll be doing that. And, uh, and again, if for some reason you cannot attend it, once the sessions are done, we'll upload them so you can learn at your own time, Okay. So I know people are working, people are busy. That's why we record it so you don't miss anything, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. 
yeah, so what you, what you need to do is, that's a good question. I mean, so what you need to do is, uh, you need to first uninstall McAfee. So how do you uninstall a program? Or you, or you either uninstall it or disable it, but sometimes they will find a way of enabling themselves. So if you don't want a program, uninstall it. And how do you do that? Just come here and type uninstall. And you see control panel here, or, or just type control panel. So the control panel, this is where, and you see this uninstall programs? This is where you can come to uninstall a program. Just click on it, and it's gonna list all the stuff that, all the programs that are, that are installed on your computer. And then McAfee will be there. You can also put it in alphabetical order by clicking name, it will put it in, and then just find the program you don't want, click on it, and once you double click on it, it will ask you, do you want to uninstall? Are you sure you want to uninstall this? Just say yes, it will uninstall it for you. Once you uninstall, restart your computer, it's gone. Windows will do that for you. So for now, I'm gonna say no, but that's how you can uninstall a program on your computer. So yeah, okay, good question. So just to piggyback off that question, which one is better between the two? Is one more better than the other or do they do the same thing? So they all, the, 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 the windows, the, the, they, they actually work the same. It's up to you. If you've paid and have like McAfee or Norton or one of these virus protection programs, they're pretty good. If you already spent money on it, you can use it. But from Windows 10, Windows has done a good job where you don't have to be spending money on this software anymore. You can just activate the Windows Defender as long as you do those updates. And it doesn't matter what software you have, get in the habit of doing those updates it would protect you. So it doesn't, yeah, but if you have, if you don't, if you don't go and buy another one, if you already, if you don't, but if you have one installed, just keep using what you have. There's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't make sense for you to have two because they're going to be fighting each other in a way. And it's going to slow down your computer and sometimes may delete some files. You don't want to get deleted, stuff like that. Good questions. Any other questions? Mohamed, could you please explain this one that you explained just now, please? Explain what? About the uh, virus, antivirus thing. Antivirus? Yes. So, like, like I said, it's like, let's say you have two dogs, right? Uh, they're protecting your house, right? And they, they're trying to protect from any viruses from coming in, right? If you put one against the other, the other one is going to think that one is a virus that's trying to attack your system and they're going to fight. <laughs> it's like this one because the antivirus protection is looking for anything that's weird and it's going to kill it. So if one sees the other one, they're like fighting each other, thinking this one is a bad person trying to attack this one. Is a... So sometimes it causes this like a conflict that makes, up your, that makes your computer slow up and sometimes it doesn't run like it's supposed to. That's why you only need one virus protection on your, on your system. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So that means since Windows 10 comes with um, antivirus, we don't need to install another one, right? You don't, if you, yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, since, like I said, in the past, Windows didn't have it. You have it, your computer catches virus, but since Windows 10, that <laughs> defender has been good. So they've done a good job, you know, that's what competition helps. Somebody, we were talking about competition earlier about this stuff. Microsoft wants their standard to be the main thing. So they've invested money to make sure that device protection is good because people are always saying Microsoft always get hacked because a lot of people, some people can't afford to buy this expensive software, virus protection. So now they've included it as part of theirs. So for that person who doesn't have the money to go buy some of these other third party software, they can just use the one that come with Windows Defender and it will work fine. But again, nothing is 100% guarantee. If you go into sites that are like, like porn sites are known for like bad viruses, these free sites, these other things, you know, if you're just clicking on everything, your computer is gonna be most likely in risk. So be careful what you look at. You wanna go to sites that are secure. You wanna just don't go any site and click on it. So you too gotta be careful. I know we get a lot of these things in emails, right? I see it a lot in WhatsApp. They will say, hey, if you download, click here, WhatsApp has a new feature, they're gonna give it to you like a new recording. Don't click on those things. Those things are, they're gonna steal your information. If, if WhatsApp is gonna roll out a new feature, they're gonna give it to everybody. 
So don't fall for those things they say. If you click on this link and put your information, they're going to give you no. It's a hacker. It's thieves that are trying to get your information to do bad things. Again, we'll talk about that later as far as how you can protect yourself in a later session. But for now, just uh, these are some of the things I want to just explain. Thank you. So if you're interested in, in signing up for one of the classes, you can ping me directly or you can send a, a text or, or call Mr. Rahman. Mr. Rahman is our chief operating officer. He's the one that uh, does all the administrative stuff. You can do that. Another thing is if you want to know what we, we have our classes, just go to imotechtraining.com, www.imotechtraining.com. Whoops. I, so this is our main website, uh, imotechtraining.com. This is our main website. As you can see, it's secure. It's a secure site. So the other our portal, that's our learning money management uh, tool. So if you come here, you can learn more about what we do. And these are the classes we offer. We are now cheaper. So you can take $500 off of the, uh, the, the, the Amazon Web Service class. Our class is about $2,000. These are some of the classes we teach. We're also going to be teaching. Um, we also have um, help desk support, which is like a six weeks course. We're also going to have Scrum Master. But for now, these are the classes that are showing. So next month, we're going to have Scrum Master and help their support. So we do our training, and then all our training are hands-on. And uh, we do help you with um, not only the training, but we help you to get your certification. We show you what you need to study. We'll also help you to fix your resume. We'll help you how to set up a LinkedIn page, because a lot of people are getting hired through LinkedIn. And so we work with you. So, you know, throughout the process, and we have mentors that will work with you as far as when you're going through the, our program. So we are a very hands-on company. So if you want to learn yes. more about what we do, it's here. And again, uh, you can figure out more about what we do. If you're interested, just let, uh, just ping me, text me, or Mr. Rahman, and we'll tell you exactly what you need to register. But again, I want to reiterate, you know, this class is a no string. We're doing community for those that want to learn. If you like what you learn, you want to get better down the road, we're always here to help. Okay. Uh, somebody else has a question. Thank you. Uh, again, um, comments are welcome. You, uh, you can ping me individually how the class can be better. At the end of the class, I would, would do a survey because I always like input. What helps? What can be better? Because that's how things work. Uh, I got uh, a question, please. Sure. So please, what about if um, I'm interested in any of the course? Can you guys help, um, like, do an arrangement on instrumental payment, or the payment is like once? We do that. Uh, so we do. We do. We do payment plan. We know a lot of people. Some people may not have the money at once, so we will do a payment plan. For most of our classes, we require at least like a five hundred dollar down, and then okay. we'll do a payment agreement where you can pay. And we, you, and we we give you several options. You can pay by credit card. You can pay by a debit card. You can pay via cash app. Or, so we give you um all right various ways you can make payment. But yeah, we do have okay. payment plans. Thank you. That's beautiful. Any other questions? Okay, people, if you don't, I want to thank you for joining this session. I hope you guys learned something. It's going to be interesting. Like everything else, some things may be uncomfortable, but you keep at it. It's like the, the, uh, the parent. If you're a parent and your kid's learning to walk, they fall. And you're like, get up. They keep trying till they get it. If you have that mindset, you, you said, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to learn. There's YouTube. There's the sessions, there's online, there's so many resources. It's just up to you to grab it and keep working. You can learn anything. But the first step is you going through that goal and trying to set up what you want to do for it, what you want your life to be in the next five years and start today making plans on how you're going to reach that goal. Okay? So that's your first test to see how serious you are about changing your life. We're halfway through the end of this year. Finish strong. It's not how you start. Forget about the past. You're not going to change any of that. Learn from it. It's what you do from today that matters. And every day is a new day. You can always turn a new direction starting now. So here's your test. 
do that first test. Do it not for me, but do it for yourself. Because if we all progress as a community, we all go somewhere. And my mm -hmm. only thing is, if you learn something, this works for you, share with somebody else. Help somebody else, life changes. And that's what we're here about. It's not, if you use this and you become a multi-billionaire, I'm happy. If you use this and you're happy in life, I'm happy for you. If you use these tools to have a more well-rounded life, that's what life is about. But sometimes some people, they, they, they learn something and they don't want to share. They just want to keep it. And guess what? When you go, when you die, we're all going to die. It dies with you. But if you share, if you learn to just simply, without wanting anything, share with people. That's the one way to where your life lives on. Because even down the road, somebody be like, yeah, I remember I learned that from Mo. I learned that from Mahan. You know? That's a way for you to, give, to, to live on. That's a legacy. You know? So learn, let's learn to learn and share. Okay? Anyway, that's my last uh, motivational uh, speech for the day. And uh, let's just work together as a team. And, 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 and most importantly, take ownership of your, of your life. Stop blaming other people for where you are. Take responsibility and then try to say, okay, what can I do to improve my life? Instead of making all the excuses, see how you can change your own life. Okay? All right, man. Thank you very okay. much. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, folks. you. We appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice one. Thank you so much. All right. Mom, someone's calling.